a great home field crowd here at home cutting 12 straight wins for Oklahoma State should be a fantastic football game for us here this afternoon when yours 19 year old quarterback to throw on first down and it's behind the intended receiver Xavier worthy incomplete yours a couple of years ago highly rated recruit coming out of South Lake Texas went to Ohio State did not attempt to pass there just two snaps last year started this year for Texas then got hurt against Alabama missed three games but you see the numbers over the last two games seven touchdown passes including three a week ago against Iowa State and a come from behind win and here's B. John Robinson All-America candidate at running back out near the 29 for four yards. That'll bring up third down. Robinson leads the Big 12 in rushing yards per game, and he's fifth in the country in rushing touchdowns with 10. Tackling him, one of the biggest keys for the day for this Oklahoma State defense. Bijan Robinson makes defenders miss as good as anybody in college football. And he's also an excellent target out of the backfield. Oklahoma State down defensively from a year ago, but very good on third down, fifth in the country. Ewers from the pocket over the middle, it's high, and it's intercepted by Jason Taylor inside the 30-yard line. A takeaway on the first series for the Cowboys. Wow, Jason Taylor, the only holdover from last year in the secondary. This guy just has a knack for making big plays and big games. The leader of that secondary stares down Quinn Ewers the entire way. Ball Sales on yours a bit and a massive takeaway here to start this football game. Can't say enough good things about Jason Taylor just sitting back in zone coverage, eyes on the quarterback the whole way, and a big time play to give Spencer Sanders in this offense prime real estate here early. Just the third interception thrown by yours this season. Sanders to the air on first down, setting up a screen to Dominic Richardson, and he is walloped at the 30-yard line, a two-yard loss to Andre Sweat. And Barron team up on the tackle for the Longhorns. Well, that's really well defended by Texas. One of Oklahoma State's favorite plays. They run it at least a couple times a game. They set it up typically very well. Good effort rallying to the football to get Richardson on the ground. So a loss of three in Oklahoma State's first play. Cowboys are fourth in the country in scoring on the season. Sanders pass behind the intended target, incomplete. So we'll bring up third down. He was going for Bryson Green. Let's take a look at today's player spotlight brought to you by Champion. We mentioned at the outset of the telecast what's believed to be a shoulder injury, a throwing shoulder of Spencer Sanders, but we were told before kickoff he practiced this week. He's a lot better health-wise from last week. And this season leads the conference in total touchdowns, fifth in the country in points responsible for. And faced with a must-throw situation here on third and 13. He's in trouble in the backfield. Sanders on the move. A late flag. Sanders has a receiver, though, and he overthrew the intended target. Is probably holding anyway, but John Paul Richardson got behind the defense. Sanders, I think, was going to throw it away, and then all of a sudden Richardson was wide open. But that should be holding on Oklahoma State. Absolutely. Boys, a nice job by Sorrell. Came Holding inside. Offense number 61. That penalty's declined. Fourth down. Right tackle Jake Springfield. And it's going to be such a key for Oklahoma State up front. Preston Wilson, the center, not in there right now. They're going through backup. Joe Mahalski. This group has been beat up throughout the course of the season. It's a good Texas front, especially with their size. Nothing's been quite as good for Oklahoma State as this kicking game, Dave. Yeah, Tanner Brown perfect on the season. In fact, he's made 15 consecutive field goals, longest active streak in the country. But there's a lot of wind, 25-mile-an-hour wind, swirling wind on the field. And this kick. A late signal, but it's good from 48 yards. The officials stared at one another for a few seconds. But Tanner Brown has made 16 in a row, and Oklahoma State takes advantage of the interception.
Welcome back to Stillwaters. Take a look at the All-State playoff predictor. TCU right now, 95% chance it plays Kansas State tonight. It's interesting, no two-loss team has yet to make the college football playoff, yet Texas has a 38% chance if it runs the table. Their two losses, Dusty, by four points, one to Alabama, and then an overtime against Texas Tech. And that predictor, if those teams win out, would be the percentage chance to make the playoff. And, you know, I think it'll be interesting. Again, look, Texas got their hands full right here and then today against Oklahoma State. But if they somehow were able to run the table, what would that look like in the eyes of the committee? How much do you factor in the fact that Quinn Ewers gets hurt in the Bama game looking great early? Wasn't there for Texas Tech. But a lot of football before we start chalking up Ws. And, boy, this Big 12, it's a gauntlet week in, week out. And now you're going to have a holder here because of the wind blowing the ball off the tee on the kickoff this one in the field of play for Keelan Robinson and Robinson is an excellent return man out near the 30 yard line as we bring in Tom Luganville from the field well hey guys we just saw that mistake right there from Quinn yours and I think people forget that he hasn't played a lot of football in fact he hasn't played more than three games being started since the end of his junior year in high school but what I do love about him is he's got poise I would not expect that throw to affect him the rest of the game the one thing I love about him is his ability to get rid of the football from a variety of angles he can get around the rush he can get over the rush everything is very effortless for him that's what Steve Sarkeesian loves because he's got weapons and he can make every throw on the field and he can make it look easy and Tom, you wonder, was the interception his fault because Xavier Worthy, the receiver, was, was having a long conversation with Steve Sarkeesian. It wasn't yours that Sark was talking to. Good run here by B. John Robinson. Lunges forward and gets the first down out past the 39 for a pickup of 10. Nice blocking on the counter. Pull the backside guard. Bring Jalil Billingsley across. And you see B. John Robinson, man, I think he's the best running back in college football. Can just probe his jump cutting lateral quickness is off the charts and he can burst and get through a hole at the drop of a hat. So versatile, too. Good receiver out of the backfield. Here's a swing pass to Keelan Robinson, and he's into Oklahoma State territory. Finally knocked out of bounds inside the 45 at the 43-yard line, and that's a 15-yard game. Well, that's what Sark has at his disposal. So many different weapons. Keelan Robinson, such good speed, and you have him in the backfield, motion him over, create a one-on-one -on -one situation out in space with Jabbar Muhammad, makes a player miss, and a nice chunk play there on first down. Play fake for Ewers, setting up, and floats that over the head of Jaleel Billingsley, playing just his second game. Six-game suspension to start the season for the Alabama transfer. So now it's second and ten after the misfire. That's who Texas wants to be. They want to run the football, be a physical team, play action, pass off of it. Deep shot, deep post was covered for Worthy, and good coverage there underneath by Jason Taylor. Out of the pistol, it'll be Robinson, and he finds a running lane. What a sweet move! to the second level and beyond. Touchdown, Bijan Robinson. 42-yard run. Boy, that was impressive. A couple of cuts. Goodbye, Cowboy defenders. As advertised, and it's the patience. He waits for it. Patient as the block's set up, and then as soon as he sees the hole, you're going to see the burst past that last level. Leaves Jason Taylor on with his lateral side-to-side -side movements and a big touchdown there for Texas. 11th rushing touchdown, 12th overall for Bijan Robinson, and the point after makes it 7-3, Longhorns. Well, he's one of the best running backs in all of college football, and we talked about it coming in. One of the keys for Oklahoma State, you got to tackle number five, and on this play, no one tackled him. Six for the Longhorns. Football on ABC is presented by Arby's. Arby's, we have the meats. There were about 60,000 people involved in the walk around last night, Oklahoma State homecoming. One of the reasons why our old crew stayed in Oklahoma City, which is over an hour away from Stillwater, as we take a look at the Taco Bell Live My Student section, student sections across the country competing to be the Live My Student section of the year all season long. 
One of the biggest homecomings in all the country. Coach Gundy said 65,000 coming in town for this. Great their, venue here. They're friendly, too. They even gave you a former Sooner a nice little ovation as you took the field. Here's a touchback, and Oklahoma State will start in the 25, trailing 7-3. We'll take a look at that touchdown run from Bijan Robinson, number one in the country at tackles evaded this year, and we saw it with a couple of missed tackles by Oklahoma State, Mason Cobb initially, and it was Jason Taylor on the second level. Longest run given up by an Oklahoma State defense this season. This this is a Cowboy defense that has some guys banged up on the defensive line. Brock Martin not playing today. Brandon Evers earlier this week announced that he's done playing college football. A guy that's in his sixth year. So it might be a shootout today in Stillwater. Sanders with a fade down the sideline, and it's broken up in a flat. The defender had his back turned the whole way on the pass intended for Stephon Johnson. It was Ryan Watts, Ohio State transfer. It's going to get called for interference here. Watts, big body corner, 6'3", north of 200 pounds. As you mentioned, Dave, just never turns pass around. Defense number six. Ball will be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Never turns around to make a play on the football, and, and Johnson doing a good job trying to work his way around the big body corner, but a true freshman, Stephon Johnson, talking with Casey Dunn here earlier today. Braden Johnson out today. Jaden Bray out, and they're going to look to this true freshman to try to make some plays. Luke said he's got excellent ball skills and a high ceiling. Long throw on a screen, and Texas is all over that. The ball is caught at the 40-yard line by Dominic Richardson, brought down by Jade Barron. So the second down, this is uh, for Oklahoma State. If they can get a win, would be its 13th consecutive home win. 12 in a row is a school record. Richardson, and he gets dumped at the line of scrimmage by Ovia Gofu, so third and long coming up. Yeah, just no movement on the interior of that defensive line. Moro Ojimo in there stacking things up, allows a Gofu to come from the backside and make that play. It's Texas defense much improved from where they were a season ago. Gary Patterson now an analyst on this staff, helping Pete Kwiatkowski. It's an Oklahoma State team, too, that struggles to run the ball. Obviously in a passing situation here. Sanders pressures it in the space. Deep ball pulled down inside the 20-yard line. Bryson Green downfield, 39 yards. How about Spencer Sanders? Pressure in his face. They bring the blitz. Overshown comes clean. Steps into this throw. Puts a lot of air underneath it. And an outstanding job by Green going up and making the catch. They go fast. Play fake for Sanders. Looking to run. He's to the 18-yard line, tripped up by Barron, so a gain of one or two. Guess that to shoulders, okay. Looking at that deep ball thrown by Spencer Sanders. It looked at times late against TCU that he didn't have the arm strength. And Bryson Green has really taken a big step forward last couple of weeks. Big touchdown against Baylor. Big plays against Tech. Nice catch there. Sanders, there's a flag down. Sanders in trouble, gets rid of it. Incomplete. Agofu is trying to wrap him up. There are actually two flags down. You mentioned Bryson Green. They really wanted to target him early because he did not have a catch yeah. against TCU last week. So mission accomplished. Let's see what the flags are about. You. Might have been too many men on the field there. Offside. Defense. Five-yard penalty. Second down. They go fast. They force you to get set very quickly here in Stillwater. Part of what Casey Dunn wanted to do with his veteran quarterback, Spencer Sanders. And it's really when he is operating at his best when they go pedal the metal and go quick. There's another one. Yep. Free play. Sanders. End zone. Incomplete. Back shoulder throw for true freshman Talon Shetron. A free five yards here. Good hard count there by Spencer Sanders. This will give him a first down. It was third down and four. Offside, defense number 88, unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty, first down. 
And that was another true freshman, Talon Chetron, highly rated guy. Lugs, I know you liked him a lot. We were talking with Coach Gunny before the game. He said, hey, man, it's a great opportunity for some young guys to step up. Yeah, and I think their younger guys are actually the most talented of this group as a collective whole. So opportunity for them to make some plays and maybe stay in the lineup going Fuck forward. Fuck up, Ritter. Please reset Bryson the game. Green to 10 got one on one please. over to the field. Yeah, at the top of the screen, matched up on Deshaun Jamison, fifth-year corner. Thank you. He's got two interceptions on the season. First and goal from the eight. Richardson gets the carry inside the five and down to the three, wrapped up by Jalen Ford, who's leading the Big 12 in tackles. Dominic Richardson, he's been a bell cow so far, far this year, but you know, for average, they really haven't been able to get it going. And, and Richardson, he's a physical bruising runner, but making guys miss the explosion just hasn't quite been there this year. On second and goal, Richardson again keeps the feet moving and hits Painter. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. This is what Casey Dunn wanted. He wanted some physicality. Wanted to get after inside. It's Hunter Woodard. It's also the backup center, Joe Mahalski. Nice job getting to the second level by Mahalski on that double. And you see the power there from Richardson running through the initial tackler. Excellent answer by the Cowboys on that drive. And Tanner Brown now 31 of 31 on extra points. Also 13 of 13 on field goals. And the Cowboys lead 10-7. A lot has happened in the first five minutes of this game. Mike Gundy's done such a good job here in Stillwater now in his 18th season. 12 consecutive home wins going back to a loss to Texas in overtime in 2020. Sark in year two is the head man with the Longhorns. Just one in five in true road games. And the win was at TCU early last year. They've lost five in a row in true road games. Of course, they throttled in a neutral site situation, Oklahoma, just a few weeks ago. Our Saturday Night Football game presented by Capital One. Minnesota's on the road and a whiteout at Penn State. 16th ranked Nittany Lions, 7.30 Eastern Time, 4.30 Pacific, ABC in the ESPN app. Treat to see how Penn State bounces back. I was shocked at the way Michigan manhandled them. It should be a great scene tonight there in Happy Valley. We showed that graphic, 12 straight wins for Mike Gundy. You mentioned it. The job Mike Gundy's done here in Stillwater. About as good a job as you'll find anywhere in college football. It's, and he, it's the level of consistency he's sustained over these 18 years. And 19 consecutive weeks in the top 15. That's a school record. They dropped three spots from last week when they were number eight. That is tipped at the line and incomplete. Cody Walter shy. Looked like he got a hand up. And as a defensive lineman, if you're not going to be able to get there, get in the passing lane, get your hand up. Well done by Walter Shot. Give to Robinson on second down, and he's dragged to the ground at the 31. And that's really what it takes. It's, it's hard to get him to the ground with that first guy. We're seeing a lot of ankle tackle attempts with hands. That's not going to get it done either. No, it's not. This offensive line much improved, starting two true freshmen. That's the staple outside zone. They love to run. Robinson the other side, and he's wrapped up and dropped in the backfield at the 30-yard line. Sione Asi, who's got six and a half tackles for a loss now in the season. And it's fourth and five. When a wide zone, you got to penetrate. Watch Asi just get right up the field, get vertical right now, and make a huge play in the backfield to force this Texas punt. Big time play by the big man, Asi, with a tackle for loss. There's the punt. Presley under it, and he don't think it touched him. The officials have to have a conversation. Again, the wind is really tricky. It's swirling 25 miles an hour. They're, saying, they're saying that Presley did touch it. You can't return that if you're Texas, but they did cover it up. Keelan Robinson was right there, so it'll be Texas football at Rolling the 35-yard line. Was that the ball was touched by the receiving team, recovered by the kicking team. First down. Brennan Presley with a big mistake. Don't it's see that enough. very often from the outstanding junior from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Oh, I don't know. They're showing it here on the big board here. We're gonna give you a look. 
I don't think from that angle, it's tough to tell. Right, did it touch his leg? It didn't touch his right. hand. No, I, I think initially maybe they thought it was his foot. Well, I don't know, Dave. I, it's hard for me to see where that hit him. And again, if it's not indisputable, video evidence beyond all doubt, if you still aren't sure, based on what you're looking at, I don't know. Can you overturn? That's hard to tell if it was the foot or just the ball checked up on the well, turf. Definitely checked up on the turf. I mean, and that thing looked like, as you said, checked, did not go backwards, did not continue to go forward. It went backwards. And a great reaction by Texas, too, guys. It was. Because they sell the job. The they get the ball. under further review. Rolling on the field was that the ball was touched by the receiving team, recovered by the kicking team. What's interesting, we mentioned again the wind, a factor there, because Presley looked pretty sure right. until the last second, and then he pulled back. And it's swirling in here here today. Gusts up to 25 miles an hour, and... Tom, you were watching them in pregame, right? They were having a yeah. tough time judging exactly how those balls were coming down. No, no question, Dusty. And really what's happening, it's affecting the punt game and the field goal game. That ball gets up there, it hangs, and it actually starts wobbling side to side. So when it drops down, I think this is going to be somewhat to keep an eye on throughout the day. Boy, that angle, too, it's re it's really hard to tell. So tough to tell. Keelan Robinson, you see Keaton Crawford right there. Keelan Robinson, with the immediate recovery, he had a big play on special teams last week with a blocked punt in the first quarter. They can piece this together with all their angles. That's tough, guys. It did not hit him initially. It had to be off the bounce. Right. And you just, it's, it's tough to tell definitively. Yeah, it hits the ground first. Which way it bounces, and we've got some great looks at it here, but slow this thing down. You see it bounce, does it check up? I mean, from there, it looks like it hits him, but we don't know for sure. The ruling of the field is really what matters here, and that was he touched it, because... And that's what's going to be difficult, right? Because if they don't have definitive proof to overturn it, then it'll be call stands. And that angle, it looks like it doesn't and hit him. And that angle looks like it doesn't hit him. And that's, and it just watching Brennan Presley's reaction, he didn't act as if the ball hit him. Right. He, he acted like he was okay and he got away from it. Clearly, Texas jumps all over it, as they should, just in case. It's going to be fascinating. Again, initially when we saw it, I didn't think it hit him. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. First down, Texas. Yeah. I just think that's a case of they, they just could not. They didn't have enough to say for sure that it didn't touch him. To me, if it's if it's not called, you know, that it hit him on the field, I think it stands as well. You know what I'm saying? Like, whatever was called on the field, they're going to go with it. And, man, big, big miscue there for Oklahoma State and a huge opportunity for the long ones. First mistake by Oklahoma State. Texas had a turnover on its opening possession. Ewers threw a pick. Cowboys turn that into three points. Now let's see if the Longhorns can take advantage of the miscue by the home team. And a big hole for B. John Robinson running straight ahead to the 29. He's getting five or six yards every time he touches the football. Five consecutive 100-yard games. He had a season-high 28 rushing attempts a week ago. Nice job inside the center. Jake Majors opened up that hole. Here comes carry number seven on the day, and Robinson this time is ripped up and thrown down by Mason Cobb at the 30-yard line. Cobb, the leading tackler for Oklahoma State, and second in the conference. Well, he's been great for this football team this year. Just a smart, headsy football player. Slow plays it all the way to the edge, and a nice tackle to get him on the ground. Understudy Malcolm Rodriguez, and man, did he learn a lot from that gentleman. They're going to run it on third down, and they don't get the first down. Robinson pinballed off of one defender, and then Tui Halamaka with the tackle. You would imagine Texas would go for it, and that's probably why they ran that play there on third down. It'll be fourth and three. There's Mason Cobb again knifing in there, getting the initial contact on Bijan Robinson before other defenders could help him get on the ground. Big third down, and what a huge stop this could be for Oklahoma State after the miscue on the punt. You wonder if the wind is a factor here. Burt Auburn has the leg. He made a 49-yarder against Alabama earlier this season. But they are going for it. There's a flag down, a quick throw. And Oklahoma State takes down Roshan Johnson, short of the line to gain. Turnover on downs. That's assuming the penalty is
is against Texas and not on Oklahoma State. Illegal formation. Offense, more than four in the backfield. That penalty's declined. First down, Oklahoma State. And that's big for Oklahoma State. It's massive. I mean, after that, Texas gets a gift right there in scoring position to get that stop. Well done by Derek Mason in his defense. And it's the veteran, the fifth-year senior, Jason Taylor, once again, doing an excellent job reading this play, understanding what's coming, and a great tackle there on Roshan Johnson. Big body running back. Extremely well done by the Cowboy defense. Oklahoma State takes over on downs. Jaden Nixon in the game at running back. Only 14 carries on the year for him. They fake it to him. Sanders on the rollout and a high throw. Incomplete going for John Paul Richardson. We'll see if Jaden Nixon gets more touches today because Dominic Richardson has been really the only reliable running back. Ollie Gordon, a true freshman, has only touched it once in each of the last two games. Had a fumble earlier this season. You wonder if they don't trust him. And Jaden Nixon, he's got home run speed. If he can make that initial defender miss, he can give this running game what they've been missing most of the season. He leaves the backfield. Sanders to throw. That looked like a good tip, but still gets to Richardson. And a gain of seven on the play, brought down by Jaron Thompson. So third and short coming up. Yeah, Overshone coming off the edge. A little bit of pressure. Gets his hand up to flex that pass. Richardson stays with it. Good concentration. Setting up third and manageable. You reference these young running backs, why they may not be playing. With Ollie Gordon, he's not playing because he put the ball on the ground. So pass protection and fumble issues will keep you on the bench as your young running back. You go read zone here. Spencer Sanders could keep it. He's a great runner. Sanders on third and short, and that was nearly picked off. Jaron Thompson stepped in front of that, did a good job to knock it down. It was intended for John Paul Richardson, and Oklahoma State will punt. Well, they go with that quick out once again there with Richardson in motion, and it's excellent recognition there by Thompson. Sees it, feels it, plants his foot, makes a great pass breakup. He was inches, Dave, from picking that thing and taking it to the house. So 32-year-old Tom Hutton, the oldest active player in the country, He's a great punter, too. Fourth in the country and punts inside the 20. Xavier Worthy is deep. And Worthy fields it on the run. Got a head start. He's already up past the 40 and close to midfield. So a 25-yard return. Let's go to Kevin Agandi in the studio. Gabe just reminding you, we are just minutes away from the UFC 280. Oliveira, Islam Makachev over on ESPN Plus, pay-per-view. Meanwhile, Purdue is down 21-0 in Wisconsin. Tulane ranked for the first time since 1998. They're up 21-0 against Memphis on ESPN2. And Wake Forest, number 13 in the country, just the 7-3 lead against BC on the ACC Network. Back to you. Uh, some good games early on. Cincinnati just getting past SMU. Clemson survives at home. Syracuse. Ewers to pass. Gets leveled as he throws a deep ball. And it's on target. It's caught near the 20-yard line by Xavier Worthy. Wow, what a throw. 30 yards. When well, he took it right on the chin. Max protection, only a two-receiver route. And an excellent route there by Worthy. He gets behind the defense. A big time throw there by Quinn Ewers. Very well done. Cool, calm, collected there in the pocket to deliver that football. 33rd catch on the season for Worthy. And here's Roshan Johnson getting the edge and grabbed and thrown out of bounds after he got the first down at the nine. You talked about Quinn Ewers being calm and cool. We asked Sark, of all the quarterbacks you've been around, what does he remind you of? He said in terms of his demeanor, a lot like Matt Leiner. When Leiner was in college, nothing phased him. Won the Heisman Trophy that year. Sark was an assistant on that staff. First and goal for Ewers and company on the nine. It's Johnson again looking to cut it back. Slips a tackle and gets down to about the six-yard line for three yards. I praise. I mean, but when we asked Sark from a throwing standpoint, here's your mind, Jeff. He said, I can't really make a comp. Yeah. I haven't had anybody that throws it from these arm angles that the ball jumps out of his hand the way it does Quinn Ewers. And we all know Steve Sarkeesian. He's coached some great quarterbacks. Bijan checking back in for Roshan. Such a great one-two punch of running back to Longhorns have. One, two, three punch. We've got number seven in there as well. Yeah, Ryan. And 
a penalty marker down. False start. Offense number 65. Five yard penalty. Second down. So Jake Majors, the center. So it'll be second and goal from the 12 now for Texas. You hear the paddles going here in Stillwater. Paddlers out, banging the walls. They get hit in the head. Watch out, Tom. It's dangerous down there on those sidelines. They put Ewers under center here. Play action. Ewers setting up and dumps it off. And it's a great call inside the five. Sarkeesian. We talked a lot about this this week. Just how creative the imagination he uses with all these compliments of receivers. Only about a, a quarter motion, and then he motions, goes back the other direction. No one from Oklahoma State accounts for him, and it's a walk-in touchdown for Texas. And Dusty, you should have seen the block that Bijan Robinson. Holy smokes. Extra point good from Auburn, so it's 14-10. Longhorns in front, 421 remaining. All right, time now for our Aflac trivia question. It was just a couple weeks ago that Texas, sorry, Dusty, throttled Oklahoma 49-0. It's an impressive win, man. Give credit where credit's due. When was the last time Texas beat both Oklahoma and Oklahoma State in the same season? Ooh. Any guesses? Any thoughts? I'm thinking a little Colt McCoy. That's kind of where I'm leaning. I mean, they did play for a national championship. 09. In 2009. The last time they won the Big 12, by the way, they did play in the Big 12 championship game in 2018. Temperature around 90 degrees here in Stillwater. Very unusual for this time of year. Yes, yes it is. It's toasty. <laughs> Presley, who muffed the punt on the kick return from the 15, and Presley's got room past the 30, kicker to beat, and it's the kicker that knocks him out of bounds. Will Stone with the shoulder knocked Presley out of play. All right, let's go ahead and answer the Aflac trivia question. Going 0-9. You know Colt pretty well with Arizona. All right, let's see. Last time, wins over Oklahoma and Oklahoma State in the hey. same season. 09, there you go. Shout out Colt McCoy. Man, a little teamwork there. If you're, a, if, if you're a Texas fan, though, you're having to go a little too far back for that answer. No question. That's what Steve Sarkeesian is here to try to fix. In the national championship game, uh, here's another trivia question. Who is the quarterback on the winning team? The hint is he's going to be broadcasting a game on our air later tonight. Here's a throw down field by Sanders, and it's knocked away at the 35-yard line. Never heard of him. I believe he used to work with you two boys, Mr. McElroy. Yeah, we punted him. Brennan Presley it was the intended receiver. That'd be Greg McElroy is calling the uh, Penn State-Minnesota game with Joe Tessitore and Katie George tonight, our ABC primetime game. She had to upgrade with people that really know the game, defensive That's line. That's right, right, exactly. <laughs> nice play there by Crawford, knocking that ball away at the last minute. On second down, Richardson, and they really struggle to run the ball. That's one of the things Mike Gundy told us today, or the other day when we talked to him, said, we, we've got to find a way, especially when we get a lead to run the ball. That, that's one of the reasons they lost. They had a 17-point lead last week and could not keep the ball on the ground. No Mike Gundy's a former quarterback. He's all about physicality and running the football. Over the middle and traffic incomplete going for Presley. Dangerous throw that time. Jaron Thompson, he just dropped a gift. That ball hits him right in the hands, makes a great break on the ball. And he's going to wish he had this one back. And that just hits him right up in the sweet spot. So Tom Hutton will punt again. Xavier Worthy just had a 25-yard return. 
And Hutton didn't have a very good punt last time. Texas got close to that one. Worthy from the 12, it breaks one tackle, and then finally taken down back at the 11-yard line as we go to Kevin in the studio. Dave, time now for our at t 5G studio update. Let's go to Austin. UCLA looking for their first win in Eugene since 2004. And Dorian Thompson Robinson. Yeah, great patience. Looked off the coverage, found his back in the flat, and he made the rest happen. And then Bo Nix answering right back. You know, Oregon back on track after opening up the season with a loss to Georgia. The big play! Love what Bo Nix does. He throws the deep ball as good as anyone. Alton is rocking. We're tied at 10 apiece. Back to you. Who'd you pick in that game, Dustin? I had UCLA, DTR, a running game with Charbonneau, but it's going to be a good one in Eugene like we have here in Stillwater. And here's another carry for B. John Robinson. Out to the 19-yard line for a gain of seven on the play. That's nine carries already, and Robinson's over 70 yards already. They're blocking out in front, pull the center, Jake Majors, pull the front side guard, Hayden Connor. Good patience, and, and you see a little bit of the burst there at the end from B. John Robinson. Just kind of picks his way, Dave. There's not a tool he doesn't have in his box, man. I'm telling you, he's a complete package. Play fake yours over the middle. It's caught for a first down out past the 40 yard line. Jordan Whittington, who's finally healthy. God, it's dealt with so many injuries over the last few years. Career high 29 catch. That's what run the football does. A little play action there. As you see, Quinn Ewers kind of reading it, waiting it out. Backer safeties come down. Middle of the field's wide open. And excellent timing there on Jordan Whittington on the slant. Great to see Whittington healthy. Forget last year when he got hurt, this offense changed. Such a key piece as a veteran leader. 13 games played in three years. Ewers, deep ball down the sideline and overshoots Worthy, who got past Jabbar Muhammad, and you also had Corey Black down there. You know, going back, you guys were talking about B. John Robinson and how he has every tool. Uh, another thing he's added this year is his voice. He told us yeah. when we spoke with him this week, he's become much more vocal. It's one of the reasons why he said this this is different than last year. I know we started hot, 4-1, and one, lost six in a row. He said, we've got a lot more leaders, and I'm one of them. I'm a lot more vocal. And when you're the best player and you speak, guys are going to listen. But he said that didn't come natural to him. He's really had to push himself and work on that. Quick throw, and boy, the receiver never saw it. Bijan Robinson, he was open. He might have scored had he seen the ball. Third down. Ewers getting that ball out a little bit too quick. Bijan never turned around to identify the football. And a big third down situation here. One of the best third down units in all college football. One thing, Derek Mason, they, they've had some growing pains with so many guys graduating and departing, transferring from a year ago. This is where this front four can thrive. One of the best front fours in college football, Tyler Lacey, Colin Oliver, Trace Ford, they can flat out get after it. Got a couple guys banged up, though, as we mentioned earlier. They bring pressure here. Ewers has time, takes a shot, and unable to get there was Casey Kane. It looked like he lost the ball as well. It seemed to slow down when he got to about the 30-yard line. Fourth down, and Texas will punt. Derek Mason dialed up some pressure. It's pretty good coverage down the field, and that ball just sails on Quinn Ewers. Kane, no chance to get underneath that football. Nice third down stop there for the Cowboys. That, that's three plays in a row, Dave. Dusty, you mentioned it, where they're, they're not on the same page. No. Quarterback to wide receiver. And again, on the interception by Ewers, there were some issues with that. Here's the punt, and it's a line drive. Presley going to get out of the way this time, and it works out very well for Texas. This will be downed around the eight-yard line. All right, let's take a look at this week's college football rankings brought to you by AT&T 5G. Ohio State crushed Iowa, Tennessee. Up to number three, easily handles UT Martin. Sorry, Dave. Yeah, it was close. But the Q's put up a fight today. Interesting at quarterback from that game, too. Kate Klubnick finished that off and got Clemson to win. Don't forget Alabama, Mississippi State on ESPN later tonight. I mean, Syracuse is such a big national story that even the people here turned out wearing orange uh, to support. <laughs> I see what you did there. It's been the year of the orange, man. Wrong shade. Tennessee. Maurice now Blackwell, we'll by the way, is shaking up for Texas on special teams. But right back to
back-to-back -back games of all orange, right? You have Clemson, Syracuse, now you got Oklahoma State, Texas, and then a whiteout tonight in State College as Penn State hosts Minnesota. This is a massive game in the Big 12. I mean, again, for college football playoff purposes, but in a Big 12 that is as deep as I can ever remember, one through 10, you got to bring it each and every week for the path to get to Arlington. This game potentially carries a lot of weight. It's going to go a long way. All we have a moment, a quick word from Cheez It. Man, I make this cheesiest chain look good. I'm still feeling the cheesiest. You are a real of cheese. Cheese, feeling the cheesiest. Even Marty's wearing orange. Well, I mean, Marty, I talked to Marty last week. He said he gave you the chain to give it to me. Where's my chain <laughs> at, Dave? I've been waiting all year for that thing. I hocked it. Made some good money off it. Oklahoma State backed up on its 70-yard line. Sanders will throw from the goal line. And coming back to make the catch at the 19-yard line for a first down is Bryson Green. That's a strong throw right there from Spencer Sanders from the far hash out past the numbers. And good, strong hands there from Bryson Green. A little bit of breathing room now for the Cowboys. Another long throw from Sanders. It's on the money and upended at the 25-yard line is John Paul Richardson. Deshaun Jamison with the hit. A little jawing back and forth afterwards. With precise accuracy there from Sanders and Richardson with a nice catch. Ball's out of his hand so quick. Yeah. On second and three, quick pitch to Richardson trying to get the edge, and he's taken down short of the line to gain by Jalen Ford, so it's going to bring up third down and a couple. I thought they had that initially. I like the play design there as they get some offensive linemen out in front, but good speed by Jalen Ford. Haven't called his name much today, but he has been an integral piece to this defense throughout the course of the season. Really has taken his game to a completely another level this year. He'll keep it in the hands of Richardson, and he gets away and then fumbles the ball. It's recovered right at the line to gain. Spencer Sanders jumped on it. They had the first down after the broken tackle. Then it was fumbled, but it's recovered past the line. Barely, but enough to move the sticks. And a first down for Oklahoma State. Boy, disaster averted there by Oklahoma State. How about the heads-up play there by Spencer Sanders? He did the same thing against Baylor. You go back to the Baylor game, they're in the red zone, fumble the football, he dives in there, gets on the football. Sometimes quarterbacks, they don't want to get in the, in the muck and the grime and get on the ground. Big-time play there. Richardson again gets the carry, and again, not much, maybe two. As Sorrell was in there on the stop, you, you can see Oklahoma State is committed to this, right, yeah. Dusty? He, he, sometimes you just got to run it into the pile. Inside zone is what they want to major in. And hey, it's tough sled, man. You got Keandre Coburn in That's there. That's the end of the first quarter. Four. You got Devondre Sweat at 346, but Casey Dunn's going to keep beating that drum. A lot of offense here in Stillwater. After one, Texas leads Oklahoma State 14 to 10. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Next F1 stop is the Aramco U.S. Grand Prix tomorrow, 3 Eastern, New Pacific. It's actually in Austin. Our pre-race coverage begins at 1.30 Eastern on ABC and the ESPN app. Second and nine for Oklahoma State. Rick's 29-yard line trailing by four on the first play of the second quarter. Sanders moving around in the pocket, takes a shot, and launches that one 10 yards past the intended receiver, Brennan Presley. So it's going to be third and long. Both quarterbacks have struggled with accuracy so far in this game. Especially deep shots going back that direction, right? I mean, we saw Quinn Ewers overshoot targets a couple times, and there, as the field flips, Spencer Sanders massively missed on that one. Out of empty, high snap, and Sanders gets it away on the wide receiver screen to Presley, and he does not get the first down. That's Braylon Presley, true freshman, younger brother of Brennan Presley. DeMarvion Overshone read that well and made the stop. The true freshman, as you mentioned, stepping in. Boy, big, bright future for Braylon Presley. Quick, can make you miss, but with DeMarvion Overshone, Wow. That's really, really good. Plant, redirect, get to the football. He was flying. He's so rangy.
Richie, yep. Tom, 6'4", long. I mean, you know, used to play safeties, really turned into a nice linebacker. Hutton gets it blocked. And Texas has it at the 40-yard line. Maurice Blackwell, who was injured earlier in the game, comes back and blocks the punt of Tom Hutton. And Texas will have the ball at the 42-yard line of Oklahoma State. Wow, and this has been such a strong suit for Oklahoma State, the punting game, the kicking game, and a massive play here from Texas as they just come clean, get home, and Blackwell takes it off the foot. Huge special teams play for the Longhorns. Jeff Banks, special teams tight ends coach. Boy, you look excited or what? Bijan Robinson, nine carries already in this game, 74 yards in the first quarter. And here's tote number 10, but he's dragged down after a one yard pickup by Mason Cobb. season nice start to this football game good tackle and right now Texas has an extra offensive lineman in the game he just checked out but that previous play 92 was in it's also their backup left tackle Andre Carrick you'll see him getting that big personnel try to pound the football second and nine after the one yard pickup viewers to throw here going for Robinson is open caught inside the 20 a breakdown defensively and Robinson makes another house call 41 yard touchdown for the It looks like they're in man-to-man -man coverage, and nobody identifies and goes with Bijan late by the safety, and late will get you beat as Bijan Robinson strolls in the end zone for a second time. Dusty, you see the influence of those two inside slot receivers coming across the field, and they bump off the linebacker. Auburn puts through the extra point, and so it is 21-10, Texas. Early second quarter, they take advantage of the block punt. John Robinson, so dangerous in the open field, especially when nobody's covering him. John Robinson already 115 yards of total offense, which is 30 more than Oklahoma State has as this kickoff will go into the end zone for a touchback. You said earlier, Bijan Robinson, probably best running back in the country. He might be the best player, certainly in the top 10. Definitely in the conversation. I don't think there's any doubt about that. He told us he's got the best hands on the team. Let's take a look at this touchdown. Looks like Oklahoma State's in man-to-man -man coverage. Kendall Daniels, you'll see his eyes, vision in the backfield. Linebacker doesn't get over. Safety's late. It's an easy touchdown for B. John Robinson. Can't look in the backfield and play man-to-man. Now, -man. Well, you know, those routes coming across kind of picked off the linebacker yeah. from being able to get outside. Safety's late. Strike up the band at six for Texas. Kind of a dangerous time now for Oklahoma State. Sanders throws, and that was nearly intercepted. Overshone got a hand on that ball. Second time, he's deflected a pass. Their inability to run the football has been a problem, and it showed itself late in the loss to TCU when they had a 17-point lead, and they're just coming out throwing the ball now down 11. Don't want to get it back to Texas too quickly. They haven't been able to stop the Longhorns, save the interception on the first drive. Sanders leaving the pocket, takes off. The 30 yard line and dives for the first down. Out to the 36. Fourth year quarterback, first team all Big 12 last year. Such a good runner. It's what he's going to have to do to be able to pick up some yards on the ground. Really physical, strong run there by Sanders to move the sticks. Got eight rushing touchdowns on the season. That's a ton for a quarterback. Sanders dumping it off here. Stephon Johnson out of bounds at the 40-yard line. That's a pickup of four yards on first down. Sanders practiced this week, we were told, just before kickoff, that he did practice after not working out in practice last week and starting the TCU game. 
battling what's believed to be a shoulder injury. Here he is running again. He slides and takes a shot, and there comes a flag. He got leveled at midfield by Anthony Cook, and that's going to tack on 15 more, and that could be targeting as well, which would leave Cook ejected. Spencer Sanders a little bit shaken up, too, obviously, after taking that shot. Trying to compose himself. I mean, he came Ooh, after the head. That... We haven't we seen that so much this year. The quarterbacks go into that sliding motion. These defenders come. They're coming full speed. It's a tough spot to be in as a defender, but, man, just seen that time and time again throughout the after season. After the play was over, personal foul, unnecessary roughness with targeting. Defense number 11, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. The previous play is under further review. When the quarterback goes into that sliding motion, you got to lay off. Yeah. And it's, it's tough as a defender. It really is in real time, real speed, as we take a look at this one one more time. But the minute you give yourself up, hands off. Right. I mean, initially, when he leaves his feet, he's thinking he's going to hit him exactly. in, in the chest. <laughs> he's not diving for the head. But then when the slide happens, he hits him in the shoulder. He, you know, initially uses his shoulder and hits Sanders in the shoulder. I, Zach, yeah, well, that nice. looks like shoulder to shoulder. That's what I saw. Boy, Spencer Sanders' head really bounced off that turf yeah. hard. Yeah, I don't. That is so tough as a defender, though, Damian. It really is. And I, it's, you know. They could reverse the targeting. It's still 15 yards, though, for correct. unnecessary roughness. Right. Regardless of what happens with the targeting, the difference here is that you get Anthony Cook back. Yes. I, I, that does not look like targeting to me. They're going to keep the 15 yards, as you mentioned, on. We'll see if Cook can stay in the game. Key piece to the back of their defense. And to your point, again, watch how Sanders' oh, helmet, man. how that hits the turf. I was telling you guys, uh, it was a couple weeks ago, we, we've seen several of these hits and quarterbacks get hurt. The Oklahoma saw it with Dylan Gabriel. I wonder at what point the players start not going into that kind of slide because you're doing it to try to protect yourself. But, man, I've seen more harm done in that same situation. You're almost better off sliding face first right. down to the ground. Diving yeah. forward, yeah. Because all that's up is your shoulders and your head, right? As you're, yeah. you know, initiating that slide. And I sure hope Spencer Sanders is okay. Dave, like you said, it's such a bang bang thing. He, he's not that low when he starts to come in on him. Yeah. Sanders looks to be all right. The backup quarterback. It's either Garrett Rangel or Gunnar Gundy. It would likely be Gundy, who is uh, the son of the head coach. He's thrown 20 passes this year. Former walk on. But it looks like Sanders is good to go. He's tough, man. Already dealing with that shoulder that he's working through. And gets so much of this offense, so much of this football team is put on his shoulders, whether it be running the football, throwing the football. There is no foul for targeting. However, the personal foul is still in force. Automatic first down. So they get Anthony Cook back. Their fifth-year senior from Houston, starting strong safety, but again, they still had the unnecessary roughness and a potential momentum-changing play there as you had the run by Sanders and then tacking on the 15 for the penalty. That puts the ball just outside the 35 of Texas. Two nice runs on this drive so far. So Oklahoma State. You said it from the onset. They need something to get going, and it's been Sanders with his legs. Five and one record. Here's Richardson out of the backfield with a head of steam, and he gets upended by Cook after a pickup of five. It's good blocking there on the perimeter by the wide receivers. Casey Dunn, offensive coordinator, receivers coach. He's going to like that. Sanders to the sideline, and it's stabbed out of the air by Bryson Green. They've been targeting a lot here. He's got enough for the first down. That's three catches. He had 16 on the season coming in. Which that stick route will hitch. Good timing right there. Another free play for Oklahoma State. Sanders taking a shot. Single coverage. Jump ball. Almost pulled in. Incomplete. Shetron almost came up with it. Agofu is offside for Texas. It'll be first and five. Offside, defense number 18 in the neutral zone at the snap. Five-yard penalty, first down. 
looked yeah. like actually James had a chance to pick it off. Yeah. It wouldn't have mattered because he had the offside on Texas, but then on the redirect, almost caught for a touchdown. A third offsides now by Texas, two on the hard count. And the sixth penalty overall by the Longhorns. Sanders to uh, the sideline and Brennan Presley breaks a tackle inside the five. Oh, gets hammered out of bounds at the one yard line, but it will be first down and goal. Been waiting for him to get the football in the hands of Brennan Presley. I think he's the best wide receiver. Great route runner. You see him with some physicality running through an arm tackle there from Jamison. First and goal. Richardson walks in for the touchdown. setting up that touchdown run really nice job as he hits the sidelines lowers his shoulder and runs through the tackle of Jamison keeps his balance and gets inside the one and boy it's an excellent block by the center Joe Mahalski opening up that hole and Richardson finds the end zone for the second time today and the extra point is good Brennan Presley with that big play to set up the touchdown by Richardson and the Cowboys are back within four as we honor those who serve brought to you by Navy Federal Credit Unions take a look at Master Sergeant Earl Plumley. we had a chance to talk to him before the game yeah. just a wonderful guy awarded the Medal of Honor for actions of valor during Operation Enduring Freedom he's deployed twice in Iraq once in Afghanistan took part uh, the, in the pregame walk with Oklahoma State Co head coach Mike Gundy was honored here by the full house at Boone Pickens Stadium. It's from Clinton, Oklahoma. Thank him and all the men and women who have served, currently serve, and will serve in the future. Amen. Well said. Awesome to be around him, a hero up here in the booth before the game. You know what he said? How you pay it back? Enjoy your life. Enjoy football. Enjoy family, and enjoy all the great freedoms we have in this country. Keelan Robinson on the short kickoff for Texas. Robinson trying to go the long way. Flag down. Robinson still going, though. Tackled at the 42, but you would imagine this will come back. Penalty marker at the 34. Boy, that was a big bounce back drive by Oklahoma yes. State. Spencer Sanders was four or five passing on that drive. Touchdown by Richardson on the ground is second. And it's 21-17 Texas, four minutes gone by here in the second quarter. On a hot, humid day in Stillwater. The wind has died down a little bit, still about 20 miles an hour, but it was over 25 for a while. And we were told by Ken Dunlap, our outstanding statistician, I don't know where he got this info, but this is... There is no foul on the play. First down. Oh, that's big for Texas. They're going to have the ball around the 40-yard line. Didn't mean to keep everybody in suspense with what Ken Dunlop had told us, but this stadium is in the top three windiest stadiums, meaning most impacted by wind in the country. How about that? Who did that study? Learn something new every day. Kenny, as good as it gets from a stats man. Bringing it, bringing the heat. 87 degrees, supposed to be 92 today. Huge running lane, Robinson not touched till he crossed the midfield stripe and all the way to the 44. It's a gain of about 15. They've been running this counter till the cows come home here early. Pull, backside guard. Lee back across, big gaping hole in the middle. And you see the vision and burst from Bijan Robinson as he's closing in on her yards already in this first half. Oklahoma State fortunate to have the help of the umpire there, Dusty. He might have been going. Hey. This offensive line is so improved, Tom. Big time. Two Boy, true man. freshmen and two sophomores. Yeah. Ten carries. Already 89 yards for Robinson. Ewers hit again as he throws. It's a deep shot where they can't catch up to it. Incomplete. Ewers had to unload because Mason Cobb was about to hit him right in the chest. Boy, Mason Cobb comes scot-free. And you see Quinn Ewers stay in there as long as he possibly can. And it's tough to overthrow Xavier Worthy. That's exactly what happens. One of the fastest receivers in college football. Just a step behind that pass from Quinn Ewers. One name we have not called 
yet is Jatavion yeah. Sanders, their outstanding tight end. We'll see if they try to get him involved here on this drive. It's second and ten. And they're going to throw it out in the flat to Thompson. And he's got room inside the 30. Thompson inside the 20. His first catch, the true freshman, 32 yards. First time he's touched the ball all year. Well, it's a big pickup. A watch for Jordan Whittington, the veteran outside, with an absolutely outstanding block to help spring that pickup from Thompson. Jordan Whittington catches first downs, big blocking key piece to this offense. And now Bijan, and he's chopped down in the backfield. That was Colin Clay who made the hit, and that's a loss of a yard or two. Gets him off schedule after they reach the red zone again. And a sixth offensive lineman comes in for Texas. You mentioned him earlier, Andre Karik. Where is number 92? Sanders split out wide here. It looks like they might be isolating him. Motion's in. And a flag down. Movement by Texas going to be second Full and start. 17. Offense number 92. Five-yard penalty. Second down. So that was on Carrick. As Sanders began to motion, Carrick came out of his stance. Hey, Dusty, right now in this offensive line for Texas, true freshman D.J. Campbell has gone over to right guard. That's moved Cole Hudson to left guard. So they have three true freshmen of their starting five right now on the field at Texas. Wow. And that's a veteran group up front for Oklahoma State. Really, the strength of this Oklahoma State defense. Empty set here for yours on second and 17. From the pocket with time, yours to the end zone, and nobody home. That was thrown way out of bounds. And not on the same page with his receiver, Xavier Worthy. We've seen that several times by Texas, where it just didn't look, look like yours and his wideouts were thinking the same thing. And he had plenty of time, too. Good clean pocket, wasn't rushed. Steve Sarkeesian, year two. Texas started two and two with a one-point loss to Alabama, an overtime loss to Texas Tech. Three straight wins, including a come-from-behind victory last week. They've got a third and 17 now, 0 for 4 on third down in this game. They have to get to the two-yard line. Ewers back to pass, another flag. This could be a false start. 70-52, both kind of flinched a little bit. False start. Offense number zero, five-yard penalty, third down. And Dusty, that's nine penalties on Texas. We're a quarter and a half into the game. Shooting themselves in the foot, pre-snap. We've seen the offsides defensively, and now we're seeing false start as well. Wonder how much of this crowd's playing a role here with communication, some of those guys up front. in trouble but it's a screen for Roshan Johnson and fighting at the 20 and down he goes at the 19. It'll be about a 37 yard field goal try after the five yard gain and Cobb over there. Jason Taylor got free and Ewers had to get rid of that quickly but they were setting up the screen. Derek Mason brought pressure you mentioned it Jason Taylor comes clean they had the screen set up that's an outstanding play by Jamar Muhammad out there in space if he doesn't get Roshan Johnson wrapped up there was a lot of space out in front well done by the junior corner. Bird Auburn on for a 37 yard try and it's good. So Texas extends its lead to seven at the eight minute mark in the first half here in Stillwater. Longhorns up by seven back in Stillwater, Oklahoma State about to take the ball. And as you look at this crowd right here, this is what is so daunting about this stadium. Look at how close we are 
to the actual bench. So this is the fans right here. That's the offensive line. And Dusty referenced the communication that maybe they're having some trouble with the overall noise of the stadium. And again, three true freshmen communication. It's loud. They're smacking the wall right here. This Texas bench with the offensive line. It's tough for the offensive line and the coaches to communicate and really get after it. And Dusty, you played in the stadium yeah. in Oklahoma. You know exactly what it's like. I've lost in this stadium as a top five team back in 2002. And they are right on top of you. They do impact communication on the field on the sidelines it's a tough place to play that's a great shot there from Tom and our camera crew to give the people at home exactly how tight it is over on those sidelines a late hit out of bounds you might end up in the third row <laughs> Sanders high pass but it's pulled in a great catch at the 31 yard line by true freshman Stephon Johnson forward progress out to the 33 so that's an eight yard game well, watch these ball skills from the true freshman climb the ladder and just stab it out of the air Excellent catch there by Stephon Johnson. They don't have Braden Johnson or Jaden Bray, so we're seeing a lot more of the true freshman at wide receiver for Oklahoma State. Second and two, little play action. And here is Richardson out in space, and he's got a first down to the 37. And I think Casey Dunn deserves, deserves so much credit. He's the offensive coordinator now, but it's his 12th season. And when you look at the consistent flow of quality wide receivers here at Oklahoma State since he's been here, it's been impressive. Blackman, James Washington, Tylen Wallace to name a few, but he really does a great job as a wide receivers coach. On first down. Here's Richardson, and he's out to the 42. He gets crunched by Barron. I, I think Casey Dunn's favorite receiver might right now might be Brennan Presley, and the reason why Brennan's been dating Casey's daughter, Lauren, for the last year or so. <laughs> Did ask for permission, though. Did at call coach up. That's got to be a tough call, right? Hey, coach, uh, yeah. Yeah, what do you want to talk about? Your route running, <laughs> catching the football? Actually, no, it's about your daughter. I want to date her. <laughs> Give him credit, though, right? I give him a ton of credit, yeah. and you know, coaches always say, oh, he's such a good young man, he could date or marry my daughter. Well, just shows how good of a young man Brennan Presley really is. Sanders keeps it here, spilled at the 47 yard line, a yard short. Third down coming up, nearing six minutes to go here in the first half. Last two drives, that's been one of the change ups. We're seeing Spencer Sanders as a runner, really been extremely important. They keep it on the ground, Richard said, oh, he gets face planted. He spun out of that first tackle, then got shoved back by Ojimo. Let's see where forward progress is, though. It's right at it. He's right at the sticks. Byron Murphy was in there, too. On that D-line, it's a first down. Dusty, I'm actually surprised they haven't done more of the quarterback runs. Yep, because Texas has been in a three-man front. They're daring Oklahoma State to run the football. I'm with you, and I think that as this game progresses, we might see more and more from Spencer Sanders as a runner. Yeah, Richardson only 16 rushing yards, nine attempts. Here's Sanders, fade to the sideline, and what a throw! It's caught by Stephon Johnson inside the 30 at the 27. Dropped into a bucket. You can't throw it any better than this. Excellent touch and ball placement from Spencer Sanders, and this true freshman, Stephon Johnson, making a name for himself in this ball game. 34 yards, Sanders going back to work, this time leaving the pocket, throwing on the run, incomplete. They wanted interference downfield, and they threw the flag, boy. It took a while, but they finally threw the flag. Maybe Sanders made that happen, because he was jumping up and down, asking for a call. Barron was downfield covering Bryson Green. Gave him a shove in the back. I'm honestly surprised that Spencer didn't keep that. I thought he had plenty of room to run. They're going to get the penalty here for pass interference, but kind of right on cue as we were talking. Defense number 23, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. That's the 10th penalty on Texas. Take a look at it back into this. Yeah, there's definitely a shove. In was, the back. Was it uncatchable though? Was the ball past them at that point? Took a while to get a flag out. It was it was tight. It was close. Well, sometimes the official knows what he's gonna call, it just right. takes a while to get that flag out. Don't know if that's what happened or if he was influenced at all from Sanders and then the Oklahoma State sideline. Sanders eight for his last eight passing, 74 yards. Going to work again through the air. Dumps it off over the middle. It's caught inside the 
five and the ball comes out. And they're going to say incomplete. Braylon Presley could not complete the catch to the ground. So it's second down. That's the younger brother, Braylon Presley. This ball just pat thrown a little bit behind him. He had to reach behind him. He puts that out in front. It's a walk-in touchdown. A misfire there from Spencer Sanders right on cue. I mean, it's the old commentator jinx, right? Eight for his last eight. Yep. Always a play-by-play -play guy's fault. Yeah. Jalen Gilbo was in coverage that time. Second and ten on the 12. Oklahoma State trying to tie the game. The three true freshmen really having an impact here this first half for the wide receiver court for the Cowboys. Play fake. Sanders. End zone shot. And it is intercepted. Ryan Watts. Rolling on the field is an interception in the end zone. First down, Texas. Stephon Johnson, the intended receiver, but it's Ryan Watts who had two picks as a member of the Ohio State Buckeyes a year ago. Gets his first one as a Longhorn. Boy, it's a big-time play going back to Johnson, a true freshman. Just a nice job there by Watts. 6'3", 205 pounds plus. Spencer Sanders with a costly interception here in Stillwater. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by Arby's. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville, Texas, with a seven-point lead after the interception in the red zone. Take a look at it again. They want to go back shoulder to Stephon Johnson, and Ryan watched that boundary corner. Looks, can't really tell fully if he gets a pull there, but Johnson doesn't get in any kind of position. Good job by Watts using his body. He's a little bit of contact there. Would have been a ticky-tack pass interference but the bigger thing for Spencer Sanders he's been so much better taking care of the football has limited his turnovers and a costly interception late in this first half just his fourth interception of the season so from the 20 yard line Bijan Robinson off the left edge and a good open field tackle at the 25 yard line by Taylor Taylor coming up in that safety position man you better make that tackle if you don't a lot of green grass out in front. Well done by Jason Taylor coming down. Ian Bijan down. Here's a quick throw that's incomplete. It was Whittington out in space. Taylor was closing. Again, both quarterbacks have been off the mark. Both quarterbacks have not been in sync at times of their receivers. First ever road start in college football for Quinn Ewers. That's a good point. Ewers here. And wide open is Xavier Worthy, easily getting the first down. As it looked like defense for Oklahoma State somehow lost Xavier Worthy, the best receiver. But it comes out of the backfield. Again, this is kind of what you have to worry about with Sark, man. He moves these guys all over. Don't know exactly who's where. A nice pickup on third down. Ewer is looking and then just throws it away. Each team with all of its timeouts. around about as well as anybody, doesn't he, Tom? And, and you know, Xavier Worthy kind of used him in this offense a little bit like he used Devontae Smith at Bama, but you really have to pay attention defensively to exactly where these different pieces line up. Personnel groupings, shifts, motions, eye candy, uh, you get it all. It's a lot to prepare for. Head coach at Washington, USC, and Texas as that ball sails intended for Worthy another incompletion Corey Black in coverage upset with himself uh, maybe he could have picked that off boy that was a misfire there pass way inside of Xavier Worthy just running an out route that pass sails inside and I get Corey Black if he just plants drives that's a pick going the other way he rushed it but you also wonder again it is because we saw it after the interception the conversation between yeah. Sark and Worthy is something going on with the receivers running the wrong routes as well one for six on third down today for Ewers and company. Third and ten on the 34 of Texas. Ewers over the middle. That was a dart. And it's caught in between two defenders for a first down at the 48-yard line. There's Jatavion Sanders, the tight end with his first catch of the day. Wow, big 
time catch here on third and ten. And you want to talk about a tight window throw. It's good coverage by Mason Cobb and Benson. you got to fit it in a very small space, and that's exactly what yours does. And how about the strong hands and catch radius of Jatavion Sanders? Excellent, excellent catch over the middle. Sophomore from Denton, Texas, who they say is a great worker. He's one of the leaders of the team. Just played on special teams last year. Had no catches. This year he's got 29. Five touchdowns. Two came in the win against Oklahoma. And a timeout called here by Steve Sarkeesian. He wanted the play clock reset. But timeout. did not get it. Texas, their first 30-second timeout. That will leave Texas with two. But we said at the outset, based on what happened last year, the 4-1 and one start, six straight losses, and talking with the Texas coaches and some of the players this week, they said it, it's different. It feels different. Obviously, going out and proving it would... Uh, be even bigger if you can do that and get a win here. But what we're seeing, it, it just does look different from what we saw last year when Texas completely collapsed the second half of the season. No question. I mean, it's a good football team. And look, they're coming to play another really good football team in a hostile environment. So important drive right here. You know, closing four minutes before halftime, four minutes coming half. It's some of the most important time you'll see in a football game. We saw the mistake by the veteran Spencer Sanders. We'll see here if Quinn Ewers can take care of the football and put the Longhorns in scoring position before the break. Texas has a bye next week, still has to go to Manhattan to play Kansas State and host TCU. Those two teams, 3-0 atop the Big 12 standings, but they play tonight. And Ewers gives to Roshan Johnson, and Johnson's gone inside the 20. Johnson heading for the end zone. Touchdown, Texas. That's a 52-yard run. And don't forget about the senior, the leader of this football team, but a big-time touchdown run through a massive hole that was opened up on that Texas front. Roshan Johnson's everything you want in a player, team-first type of guy, mentality, and, man, big-time run there to make it a two-score game before the break. This is a guy that you know, gave up the carries to Bijan Robinson as the extra point is good. Remember, he, he's got almost 2,000 career rushing yards and now 20 career touchdowns. Takes a back seat to Bijan Robinson, but still has great skill. We've seen this play so much today. It's the counter. Pull backside true freshman Cole Hudson. Zero Jatavion Sanders. Big hole opens up, and it's heels to the field for Roshan Johnson. And this Texas ground game, man, has it been impressive so far today. Now 160 yards on the ground for the Longhorns. Dusty, you take a look at some of these counters, and it's almost as if we're at a football clinic and a coach is up on the grease board, and he's drawing up how it should look if everything goes right. That's exactly what it looks like today. And boy, right on cue, too, for our discussion about how this just seems different for Texas here in year two with this coaching staff. The, the leadership of the players is a big difference. They told us Roshan Johnson, there, there was something going on with the players. They weren't running the plays right. And Roshan Johnson stepped up and made his teammates run gassers. That kind of stuff wasn't happening. Accountability, Dave. It's a big key and a big factor. Quality teams, quality programs. And Sark told us, man, he, he can see the foundation's been laid. He can see, you know, the guy, guys are really starting to buy in and take hold. Definitely feels like there is a culture shift this year. Here's Jaden Nixon, and he does not make it to the 15-yard line. Let's go to Kevin Agani in the studio. Dave, Capital One halftime report minutes away with Booger McFarland. Plenty of top 10 highlights. Clemson survives right now. UCLA in trouble in Eugene. Yeah, Bo Nix is playing really, really well. And you would think that UCLA can get the run game going, but they haven't. You got to give Bo Nix and that Oregon team a lot of credit so far. How about 31 points in the first half? Old Miss in a very good one in Death Valley against LSU. Highlights coming your way at the break. And back to you guys. All right, guys, yeah, 14-point swing here for Texas to get to 31. Spencer Sanders threw an interception in the red zone as Oklahoma State was looking to tie the game. And Texas storms right down the field and scores. Plenty of time for the Cowboys, and they have all their timeouts. And they get a first down up, up past the 35-yard line. Stephon Johnson tackled at the 37, 22-yard game. What oh, absolute dart here from Spencer Sanders continuing to go to the true freshman Johnson. Sanders to throw again. That pass tipped at the line. There is a flag down. 
There's a flag actually in the backfield as well. It's going to be a hold on 68 Maturko. He got a hold of Alfred Collins working inside. Applied the pressure. Again, two flags. It might be for the same thing. There are two fouls on the play, both by the offense. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense number 95. Holding offense number 68. Those fouls offset. Replay, first down. Uh, so, you know, Kevin Marr with the mistake. They're saying both were on the offense. Obviously, one on the defense, one on the offense. So, offsetting penalties and first and ten. Well, Alfred Collins, when he came out, going back to his true freshman year, I thought he was going to be one of the dominant defensive Correction, tackles. There's a foul on each team. The, the fouls will offset. Thank you for getting Replay that right. I thought he was one of the more dominant defensive tackles in the Big 12 and in college football, and he's lacked consistency. Nice rush, but the mistake there at the end of the play. Going to run the ball here. Richardson, nice cut in the hole. Past the 50. It's Jaden Nixon. A shoe comes flying off. Nixon still going, carrying defenders all the way down near the 10 yard. was going to get a chance. He goes for 53 yards on that play. Well, they just needed a running back who could make somebody miss on that inside zone. Inside zone, make a guy miss, make a cut, and you see the speed. Nixon's a track guy, returns kicks, and just what the Cowboys needed with a big run. And he did it with one shoe. You wonder, had he not lost that shoe, maybe he would have scored. But he sets, sets up Oklahoma State at the 11-yard line. I mean, you're not faster with one shoe on, Dave? <laughs> Remember, they turned it over down here and take a shot to the end zone on first down. Tons of contact, and a flag goes down. The intended receiver was Talon Shetron, and Barron got called for pass interference on the last drive, and he's going to get flagged again. And yeah, this was a, a pretty easy one for the officials to call here. Barron with the takedown. Pass interference, defense number 23. Ball be placed at the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. But with a trust in these true freshman receivers, guys, they, Shetron, Stephon Johnson, they have not had a big role this year. We talked about Jaden Bray out, Braden Johnson. And, man, you just see a lot of trust here from Spencer Sanders continuing to go to some of these young, unproven wide receivers. But they're making plays for him. That's right. Why not? I'm with you. First and goal from the two. It's going to be Richardson looking for his third touchdown. He's in. version there of thunder and lightning thunder there from Dominique Richardson as he lowers the boom and barrels his way into the end zone we saw the lightning and the speed from Jaden Nixon I'll tell you what man this Cowboy offense has answered several times here in this first half as a very very important touchdown drive as we see Richardson extending over the goal line you know Texas is stuck in the Big 12 now it was announced this week through the 2024 football season this feels like Big 12 football here yes, sir. shoot out in the first half 31 23 with two and a half to go and Texas will have two timeouts when it gets the ball back seven point game after the point after from Tanner Brown well coming up after we are done from State College at 16th ranked Penn State taking on Minnesota. Can the Nittany Lions bounce back after losing to Michigan? That's at 7.30 Eastern time on ABC. So coming into this game, Texas at 3-1, Oklahoma State at 2-1 and one in league action. TCU and K-State both 3-0. TCU up to number eight after the come from behind win over Oklahoma State in double overtime last week. Wildcats and Horned Frogs meet tonight at 8 Eastern. Big 12 feels wide open this year. Obviously, Oklahoma struggling, not in the top five. Kansas at 2-2, two two, trying to end a two-game losing streak, facing Baylor. I think it's the deepest conference in college football, Dave. I mean, week in, week out. I mean, if you don't show up ready to play and play well, you're going to get beat. A good one tonight, Kansas State and TCU. As mentioned, Kansas playing Baylor lost earlier today, so that's three straight losses now for the Jayhawks, missing their quarterback, obviously. So Keelan Robinson is deep. Plenty of time for Quinn Ewers in Texas to move the ball down the field. 
This drive will start on the 25 after the touchback. We talked earlier about Steve Sarkeesian, the offensive coordinator, some play design. And when you run the football, man, it sure makes play action really nice. Brings those linebacker safeties up, middle of the field, open, and an easy pitch and catch. And this touchdown earlier with Xavier Worthy, you know, just that little ghost motion comes back across. Linebacker never identifies him, and it's a walking touchdown. He's got a lot of nice pieces to play with, and Steve Sarkeesian said, man, he's having fun, and this team is having fun this season as well. But the defense just gave up a touchdown. That's right. There's enough time for Oklahoma State, too, if uh, Texas goes three and out for the Cowboys to get the ball back and have time on the clock. Robinson bottled up. That rarely happens. One-yard gain, that might be just the second or third time that he's been unable to get anything on the ground. Ossie was there nice up job. front. Nice job by Xavier Benson, the other linebacker, coming in downhill, closing and restricting that running lane. You see Ossie, the nice tackle. Empty set. Robinson leaving the backfield. Excellent receiver. Already saw that on a touchdown catch. A shot down the field for Worthy and another overthrow. Boy, Xavier Worthy so far in this game has been targeted 10 times and he has three catches. Some of that I'm sure is on Worthy, but we've seen a lot of overthrows from Ewers. Well, he's one of the best receivers in the country. Great speed. Good job by Oklahoma State. That ball just sails once again on Quinn Ewers. I think he thought he was going to go outside. Worthy goes inside. Yeah, they've been off, off script all day today, Tom. Yeah. Big third down right here for this Cowboys defense. And again, if Oklahoma State can get a stop, it'll have two minutes on the clock and all of its timeouts. Four-man rush. Pressure coming up the middle. Ewers dumps it off to Sanders. Great balance by Sanders. Still fighting for yardage. And they're going to mark him down short of the line to gain at the 31. So it's fourth and four, and Texas will put it away. And it's a great rush inside by Nathan Latou. He applies the pressure on Quinn Ewers, makes him get rid of the football to Sanders well before he wanted to. Been waiting for this pass rush to take hold all day long. It's one of the better pass rushes, and a guy you don't typically expect in Latou with a nice inside move, forcing the pass from Ewers before he wanted to make it. The timeout was called. Assume it was on Oklahoma State. Has not been announced yet, but that would leave the Cowboys with two because I don't think he went out of bounds. Unless they ruled that he did go out of bounds. I think they ruled him out of bounds. Dave. Yeah, again, no announcement on a timeout, so they must have ruled him out of bounds. That's, that's big. I mean, he's fighting for yardage, but he ends up going out of bounds then and costing time for Texas backing up Presley and he is leveled as soon as he pulls it in he muffed a punt earlier in the game Keaton Crawford right there to take him down after the 54 yard punt with Crawford's been great had the block punt earlier it set up Texas with a short field and a nice open field tackle there right as Presley receives that punt kick off your Sunday with NFL countdown 10 a.m. Eastern on ESPN one on one with Daniel Jones how about the New York Giants at five and one then Monday Night Football it's the Bears and Patriots 8 Eastern on ABC ESPN ESPN Deportes, Peyton and Eli on ESPN2. Great having Joe Buck, Troy Aikman as part of that. How about Dak Prescott back now, Dave? The Cowboys. Boy, NFC East looks like maybe the best division in football. Richardson out of bounds. We'll see if he got the first down. Looks like he's just short by a yard at the 24. 143 left and three timeouts. Talon Shetron, true freshman receiver with an excellent block on the bigger body. Ryan Watts to help spring that pickup. A little behind Presley, but he makes the catch. And taken down at the 35, and he was dropped with a face mask by Sorrell. Another Texas penalty, and that's going to put the ball at midfield. That would be the 11th foul on the Longhorns. Wow. Conversation here about exactly what they saw. It might be calling a horse collar, guys. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't know if he grabbed the face mask. It looked the inside of maybe the shoulder pad. Right. There is no foul on the play. So they rule no horse collar or face mask. So it's still a first down. Ball is at the 36. Boy, great job in the open field. 
by Presley. Yeah, that's the right yeah. no call. That's right. Clock at 136. Yeah, they, they got to start the clock. Because again, he was taken down inbounds. They started on the ready for play. And over the middle, it's dropped. And then a huge hit afterwards. Wow. Shetron got lit up. He couldn't pull that ball in. Hopefully, Shetron's okay. It was... He was Jalen Ford with the hit. Let's take a look again. There were two Texas defenders around the receiver. Yeah, it was Jalen Ford with a clean but hard hit. No question. Man, that's one that Chetron, the, the true freshman, really wishes he could have back. Now watch that ball in. You hope he's okay. But, man, he took a punishing blow there from Jalen Ford. Dusty, like you said, he's been one of those three true freshmen that have made a huge difference. They can't afford for another wideout to go down. No, that's a great point. They banged up coming in here today. If you're just joining us, Brock Martin, one of the leaders on defense. He's not playing here today. Brendan Evers retired from college. So many injuries earlier this week. You know, on the offensive side, they're without Preston Wilson, Braden Johnson, wide receiver, Jaden Bray. It's a beat up Cowboys football team, and hopefully, right, Chetron will be okay. Two starters on the D line, starting center, starting receiver, backup receiver. Your quarterback was not 100% last week. They wouldn't tell us whether he's 100% this week. We do know he practiced, and Sanders has looked good today in terms of his health. Second down and 10, and Sanders hits Presley a ton of room in front of him. He gets the first down out to the 49-yard line. We were talking earlier about the design of some of the Texas plays, but that was beautiful. Just, a, mistake. just get the ball to your playmakers, get them in space. Brendan Presley again, nice job. Getting up the field, moving the chains, poor leverage there by Jaron Thompson. He came inside and allowed Presley to get to, to the perimeter. 122, here's a pitch, and they're going to throw it back to Sanders at the 45, and Texas was all over it. And Sanders finally taken down after just a one-yard game. We'll see if Oklahoma State uses a timeout. There are two Texas players injured on the play. Boy, you got to give a lot of credit to DeMarvin Overshowing right here for staying home, reading the play. That ball is a little bit underthrown, but you can understand. But Overshowing getting out there, forcing Sanders back inside to his help. It's really well done by Overshowing. It was Jaden Nixon who threw the pass. And you got Watts banged up for Texas. Trying to see the number on the other. It's like a gofu, maybe. Texas player that's banged up. It is a gofu. Clock is right now at 108. And Oklahoma State with three timeouts on the ball at midfield. Big 12 now on ESPN Plus every Wednesday. The Big 12 Football Weekly Show plus the Big 12 Soccer Tournament starts Sunday, October 30th. Sign up today at ESPNPlus.com slash Big 12 now. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak up here in the booth. Tom Luganville down on the field in Stillwater on a 90-degree windy day here in Stillwater. So one of the two Texas players is up. It's Watts that left the field. A gofu is still being looked at. Four tackles on the day for Ovia Gofu, transfer from Notre Dame. They're better edge rushers. Hopefully he's able to get up and be okay. Yeah, without him, it's tough to manufacture pass rush for this time rush for this Texas defense. Yeah, they're stout against the run. They got a lot of size, but as far as getting after the cue, don't see it as much. Take a look at these quarterbacks. Boy, Quinn Ewers, that mullet is marvelous. I got to give it up for the look. Did you see him come in, too, with a cowboy head oh, and yeah. the is sweet. I'm about to tell you what, he's been off a little bit here today. You wonder of those 13 incompletions, seven of them to Xavier Worthy, how much of that is on Worthy. Still 190 yards. He, he had the interception on the first drive. Yep. Sanders had the interception last time they were in the red zone. Nine overthrows by Ewers officially, and that's a career high for him. But as Tom mentioned earlier, still hasn't played a lot of football as they're holding that right arm of a gofu. Ewers was at Ohio State last year, just played two snaps. He didn't throw a pass. And this is only his fifth game at Texas. Right. Missed three games, got injured in the Alabama game. 
Oklahoma State with a second and eight at midfield. 108 on the clock. And three timeouts remaining. Another short throw, and it's Nixon protecting the ball as he's dumped at the 44-yard line. Boy, I'm a little surprised Oklahoma State with three timeouts isn't using one. They are going quickly, but it's six or seven seconds you wasted there. And keeping it to Sanders, and he's able to leap out of the arms of Overshone and get the first down before he steps out of the 41, a three-yard game. Boy, it's a foot race to the perimeter. Overshone trying to beat him there. Spencer Sanders not going to be denied. A little bit of a hurdle as he runs out of bounds. Stop that clock. Nice pickup by the veteran quarterback. 41 seconds remaining in the half. Good job picking up pressure, allowing Sanders to escape the pocket. He's tackled in bounds. They're going to have to use a timeout, and they'll call one here. Mike Gundy, you can probably hear it. <laughs> Get it to call that immediately. I think some of the coaches are questioning the hearing of the Oklahoma official. Oklahoma State calls their first timeout of the half. 30 actually timeout. saw him calling it, and it seemed like it took him a couple seconds to, to give it to him. 31 seconds left. Two timeouts remaining for Oklahoma State. Down seven. Jared Thompson with a really good open field tackle. It's a two-hour first half. You made the comment earlier about kind of your... You know, a couple of years ago, Big 12, everybody's like, oh, they don't play any defense, they don't play any football. But also, some really good quarterback play and some really good offenses, but there was a thrilling game last week between LSU and, or between Alabama and Tennessee. It's 52-49. All I heard was how great of a game it was. It's okay to put up some points, right, and still have quality yeah. football. Well, what a story to Tennessee. I know you know Josh Heupel very well. The job he's done with that program, given what yeah. the disarray incredible. that they were in, before he took over? Incredible. Absolutely incredible the job that him and his staff have done just now in the second year they've been there. That, that car was over off in the ditch when he showed up. <laughs> Not only did he get it out of the ditch, it was on blocks. He's flying down 35 now, man. It's a remarkable job they've done there in Knoxville. Up to number three. They play Kentucky in Knoxville next week. Sanders with a pump fake, steps up and runs. He's at the 35, and... Close to a first down, he should have it, and they're gonna call timeout anyway with 23 seconds left. So one timeout left for Oklahoma State. Or do they, oh, Mike Gundy was signaling for it. They did not call wow. timeout. Why? I don't know, they're Why? wasting six seconds. And in trouble to Sanders, and almost intercepted inside the 20 at the 15 yard line. So now you got 11 seconds left. You didn't use that timeout, and Michael Taft almost just got a takeaway. And he took a shot. Spencer Sanders took a shot off the edge. I don't understand not using the timeout there by Mike Gundy. That just, it seemed like it was a no-brainer. Really nice inside move by, there by Sorrell. Pressure off the other edge. But again, 12 seconds off the clock, and you get nothing out of it. Inside 10 seconds to go now. Sanders in trouble. Got to get out of there. Got to get rid of the ball. And it's incomplete with six seconds left. It's a poor clock management yeah. down the stretch. And now you're looking... And they're going to try it here in case of a bad snap. Actually, the clock at three seconds, so they have to kick the field goal now. They really blew that. And that's going to be about a 48-yarder. Tanner Brown has made 16 consecutive field goal attempts. That's the longest active streak in the country. He leads all kickers in the FBS in scoring this year. He made a 48-yarder earlier. This would be a 48-yarder as well. Texas going to try to freeze him. Texas, 30-second timeout. Well, you mentioned it, and you called it earlier, as there was not a big sense of urgency to get going, hadn't used any of their timeouts, and, and especially there at the end when Sanders, you know, gets tackled, why you don't use the timeout to try to give yourself a little bit, you know, more time to get in better field goal range. That's not very well done here by Coach Gundy to close out the half. And I thought I saw him signaling for a timeout, but then I don't know if he changed his mind, but none of the, he, he wasn't upset when the clock was running, right. so he obviously didn't want the timeout, but it definitely cost him an opportunity to get into the end zone. They do have a lot of faith in Tanner Brown, who's got a 52-yarder already made this season. That was against TCU in overtime. 
So it'll be a 48 yarder at the end of the half to try to get Oklahoma State within four. It's hooking and the streak is over. He missed it wide to the left. 16 consecutive made field goals until that miss. And Texas takes a seven point lead into the locker room. Texas in front will send it to Kevin and Booger. Capital One Halftime Report after these messages and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Arby's on a warm, windy day in Stillwater. You're watching the Big 12 on ABC. Texas leading 31-24 as we get ready to start the second half. Dave Pash, we've got Tom Luganville down on the field, and up here in the booth, a former Big 12 nose tackle has got to be ripping his hair out watching all this <laughs> offense. Dusty Dvorak. I ripped your hair out. <laughs> <laughs> That's why there's none left. That's what happened. you got two teams combining for 700 yards of offense, almost 60 points, and almost 100 plays. Big 12 is back and better than ever. Man, what a fun, competitive half that was, and Oklahoma State kept coming back, coming back. Couldn't come up with points right there before halftime, but to get the ball to start this second half, and man, these offenses, they have been churning out yards and points at a rapid rate here this afternoon. Oklahoma State missed the field goal at the end of the first half. Also had an interception in the end zone. And that's right now is the difference in the game. The Cowboys will get the ball to start the second half. Jaden Nixon going to return it from the four. Absolutely smoked at the 16. Big plays, the story of the first half for Texas. Three different touchdowns of 41 yards or more. B. John Robinson that got it going. They also had a 42-yard touchdown reception. Roshan Johnson, a 52-yarder. Texas running the football extremely well, almost 200 yards on the ground in that opening half for the Longhorns. But Oklahoma State keeps fighting back. and. Dominic Richardson found Pater three different times to keep this Cowboy team right in the football game. Ten carries, 18 yards, but three touchdowns for Richardson. He'll get the call here on first down. Gobbled up by Tavandre Sweat after a short gain, two yards. You mentioned the interception in the end zone from Spencer Sanders, but other than that, he's been really good, almost 250 yards of offense. Ryan Watts shaken up for Texas. He had an interception in the end zone, as we mentioned. Sanders off play action in trouble, gets out of there, and it's almost intercepted, thrown behind the intended target, Rashad Owens. Let's check in with Tom. Well, guys, I, talk, I was talking with Mike Gundy coming off the field, going into the locker room, and he kind of chuckled. He said, we got to stop the counter. It's that simple. He actually looked up at the score. He said, as many bad things have happened, I'm pretty pleased with our football team. Texas, conversely, Sark says they just got to calm down. Quinn Ewers has been a bit off. Then when he's been on, somebody else has been off, and they just haven't been able to connect the way they've been in rhythm the last couple of weeks. So once everybody just settle down on the Texas sideline. Pretty windy down to the field, if you could tell based on Luke's hair. In trouble, Sanders sacked by Jalen Ford back at the six-yard line. A loss of about 12 on the play. But Jalen Ford's going to come on a blitz, and he's going to find a crease in the offensive line for Oklahoma State. Gets home, no one open down the field, and a big-time stop on the opening third down for this Texas defense. So they're going to have to punt from their own end zone. Keep in mind, Texas blocked a punt in the first half. Xavier Worthy is deep. Punt from the shade into the sun. Worthy signaling and has the ball at the 47-yard line. Good starting field position to the second half for the Longhorns. And... John Robinson with an incredible showing in the first half again for Texas. 93 rushing yards. He also has a receiving touchdown. Roshan Johnson, a lot of those 68 yards coming on one play. 52-yard touchdown for him. And Tom touched on it. I've been trying to talk about it and illustrate it throughout the game. It's counter. And if you've watched a lot of Texas this year, they're typically a split zone, outside zone team. But boy, the counter is hitting downhill. 
and had a lot of success in this run game. They go with six offensive linemen to start this drive. Here's Robinson trying to bust it to the outside. So fast. He's pushed out by Jason Taylor at the 47-yard line, a gain of five. And again, right back to the counter as this game started. We're going to start the second half the exact same way. Pretty well defense, but Jason Taylor gets too far inside and allows Bijan to get to the perimeter. Nothing there initially, yet a five-yard gain for Mr. Robinson. Queen Ewers a little bit off in that first half. Play fake here for Ewers, and another throw to Worthy that's high and incomplete. That is now 11 targets for Worthy and just three catches, and he's been overthrowing him. That's the 10th overthrow by Ewers in this game. The win's got to be part of that, right? He is way off. Tell me, Tom, because up here we can't feel it as much. Is that why we're seeing so many overthrows? Is the win playing that big a role in the pass game? I do think it's a factor, but quite honestly, guys, I, I think it's more that Quinn Ewers is rushing the throw. And he didn't have to rush that throw. He just seems a bit antsy. He's not as comfortable right now, but wind is a factor. Ewers on third down and five, hit from behind and sacked. Did well to hang on to that ball as Trace Ford came roaring around the edge to get the sack. He went for the strip. There's that down. Cowboy pass rush. Trace Ford, man, it's great to see him finally healthy. Watch the get off. First step off the edge, and he's going to get home. And you reference it, Dave. He is going for this football. It's a quick speed rush on a true freshman. Offensive tackle, Kelvin Banks. Nice arm over, and he came ripping down. Good job of Quinn Ewers putting that ball away. And because of the sack, forced to punt. Otherwise, they may have gone for it if it was still fourth down and five. Presley, who had a muff punt in the first half, lets that one go, and it checks up and is down inside the 10-yard line. Good punt by Treo, 38 yards, no return. Jaron Thompson downs it inside the 10. So a moment ago, wide receiver Savion Red getting into it with the coach. You see Quinn Ewers here trying to play peacemaker and then others have to step in red has not been targeted today there have been some issues with viewers and his receivers not being on the same page it's an emotional game played and coached by emotional men saving on red he's a check those emotions richardson past the 10 and moving the pile out to the 14 yard line it's a gain of about five for Dominic Richardson, a junior from Oklahoma City, who has got eight touchdowns now in the season, three in this game. Physical style of running for Dominic Richardson. Play fake, and Sanders throwing a fade, incomplete. And another flag. Deshaun Jamison defending. Bryson Green downfield. That would be penalty number 11 on Texas. None by Oklahoma State. Pass interference. Defense number five. 15-yard penalty. Automatic first down. It's a handful of pass interference calls on Texas. And you'll see Jamison working down the field. Gets that arm extended into the chest of Green. Draws the flag. Just a little too much contact there at the end. Kind of a touch flag there, but... They go back to the ground game, and Richardson is swallowed for a loss at the 28-yard line by Coburn. They get a first down, they try to pound it, and it just hasn't worked. That's been an issue all year, the running game for Oklahoma State. They had a 17-point lead at TCU, blew the lead because they couldn't possess the ball, couldn't run it. Sanders looking to check it down to Richardson, finally does, and Richardson pays for it. Overshone absolutely lays him out. A loss on the play of a yard. Which well, really good coverage down the field. You saw Spencer Sanders waiting. He was waiting for Brennan Presley to come open on the in-cutting dig route, but it was well defended. And man, DeMarvi and Overshone lowers the boom. Big open field tackle for Agent Zero. We've seen him make some big hits today. Fifth year senior. Sanders to throw, gets leveled, throws a deep ball, and it's incomplete. He was going for green. Jamison almost intercepted it. Again, there was pressure right in the face of Sanders as he threw the ball. It's fourth down. But it's the big man, Keandre Coburn. Watch him on this twist inside as he's going to loop around and get good pressure. This six foot two, 344 pounds of man coming right at 
pressure, and he lands the big hit there on Spencer Sanders. Nice job stopping the run by Coburn on early down. An excellent rush there on third down to get the Texas defense off the field. And the 32-year-old punter, Tom Hutton, out there. Worthy moving to his left, lets it go. And it sticks in the ground at the 28-yard line. 48-yard punt. No return. Early third quarter. Hey, we've had two stops in a row in this game. Who's going to survive the gauntlet? What if chaos happens? Oh. If it's us versus them, who you think going to win? The Top 25 Ranking Show, Tuesdays on ESPN. If it's us versus them, who you think going to win? Well, so far, Texas had a lot of success running the football. It's an old-school counterplay. Pull backside guard, bring the tight end around, and they've had tremendous success hitting it up inside between the tackles. Both B. John Robinson and Roshan Johnson, as we take a look at the 52-yard touchdown. I would imagine Texas continues to stick with this play that's had a lot of success. And I got to tell you, we've seen Quinn Ewers off today. Surprised they're going away from this run game as much as they have. Run play off the left side for Robinson. And nothing doing there. Trace Ford on the stop. Oklahoma State's been a little bit better on that D line on first down, stopping the run. In the second half, you look at inside the tackles, what the Longhorns have been able to do today. 159 yards on 16 attempts. Feels a little bit better, though, so far. Early on here in the third. Play action. Ewers in trouble. Takes a shot and was just throwing it away. So it's going to be third down and long for Texas. Derek Mason dialed it up, brought his big safety, Kendall Daniels, off the edge. Kendall Daniels got a promising future, 6'4", 220. Earlier, he kind of got beat on that touchdown, but nice job on the blitz, forcing the pressure and the bad throw there from Ewers. Just try to get it away. It's big third down for Oklahoma State. Texas just two for nine on third down. Pass over the middle, off the hands of Roshan Johnson, incomplete. Fourth down, a quick three and out. That's now four consecutive stops in this game. Four possessions, four punts. Defense has come alive here in the second half. And, and that ball was kind of rushed, too, Tom. You, you mentioned it earlier, Roshan yeah. coming out of his break, a little angle route here, as it's a nice job by Kapinski to stay with him. But that ball's on him really, really fast. Didn't look quite ready. Setting up the return. Here's the punt by Trejo. Presley immediately signals and goes down to make the fair catch around the 31-yard line. 42-yard punt. This season, Allstate will celebrate every field goal and extra point made by participating universities by making a donation to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Dave Pash, Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganbill in Stillwater on a hot, windy day. Spencer Sanders came into this game a lot of people weren't sure about his health. He did practice this week, we were told, before kickoff after clearly favoring yeah. his throwing arm in the TCU game. And he looked like he got banged up on the last play. Yeah, he did. Coburn hit him. I want to see Jaden Nixon get the ball some more in this run game. He's in there at running back at a 51-yard run in the first half. He's trying to get the edge here, and it's not happening. They finally blow it dead. Sorrell and Murphy had him wrapped up at the 29-yard line, so they get off schedule with a two-yard loss on first down. I asked for it, I get it, and no success. Really nice job there by Byron Murphy inside, playing the other side of the football, allowing Jaden Nixon nowhere to maneuver. That's a young running back, though, I think missing the inside one cut and get north and south. Richard, freshman from Dallas, just 14 carries on the season coming in. Sanders in trouble, gets hit again as he throws, and it's pulled in for a first down. Stephon Johnson past midfield and out of bounds. They may have found a talented young target. The true freshman from Houston's been big today. No doubt the blitz gets home. Watch Johnson go back and attack this football. Ball was kind of waiting in the air. Goes back, attacks the ball, snatches out of the air, and a big pickup. Nice first down. I am 
really impressed with what I've seen from Stephon Johnson. Five catches today. He had five catches all season coming in. Ball in Texas territory. Wide receiver screen. Presley. Good open field stop at the 44-yard line by Taff. It's gain of five on the play for Brennan Presley. Sanders looks to be all right. Took a shot on that last possession. Took a while to get up. Also, really tough young man. That snap took a while to get to the quarterback, and that totally disrupted the timing. Nixon with no running room. Ojimo on the stop. It's going to be third down. With Baron Sorrell also, man, he's been playing really well up front. 88 for Texas. No running room whatsoever. He tried to cut, like you mentioned earlier, Tom, but just nowhere to go. This Texas defense really doing a nice job of slowing down this Oklahoma State rushing attack. Might be in four down territory. Sanders looking in trouble and makes a move at the 45. Gets down to the 44, just a one yard gain. It's fourth and five. We'll see if they go for it or if they punt it. And they're going to let Tom Hutton come out and punt the ball. What do you think of this move here? I think that you got one of the best punters in the country. And at this stage of the game, you know, right there at midfield, I can understand playing, you know, playing field position. Your defense has gotten you two stops to start the second half. You've got a young quarterback on the road for the first time that seems a bit off. I understand this from Mike Gundy. And Tom Hutton is fourth in the country, landing punts inside the 20. Takes his time, sets up. And this goes into the end zone for a touchback. With the swirling wind down there, you wonder if that impacted the kick, because that's the first touchback for Hutton all season. Boy, special teams, it's such a factor, and it's been a huge factor today. I thought coming in, Oklahoma State had a massive advantage, but it's been advantage Texas. Block punt early, Tanner Brown's first missed field goal there before half, and Tom Hutton is an absolute weapon, fourth in the country with 15 punts inside the 20, and that one, Gundy trusting his punter, goes in the end zone. Been a huge factor in this game, Dave. Also had a muff punt, but it did not lead to any Texas points. The Longhorns turned it over on downs. Here's Ewers, only 11 completions on the day, and dumps that one off to Worthy, who's got the first down past the 40, and Worthy wrapped up at the 45 and tackled at the 48. So a gain of almost 30 on that play, much needed explosive play through the air for Texas. It's a shallow cross for Xavier Worthy, and he gets lost in the shuffle. Nobody's able to account for him. And you see the speed in the open field. What a big pickup there from Worthy. Now, Ewers has not had consecutive completions since the first quarter. Gonna run the ball. Nowhere to go. Good job. Kendall Daniels again coming down to make the tackle on Keelan Robinson. They mark forward progress at the 46. So it's only a one-yard loss. Second down and 11. Also, nice job there by Tyler Lacey. I think Tyler Lacey is one of the best defensive linemen in the Big 12. See him place him in, place him tackle. They move him around. Big 89's really having an outstanding senior season. This is an Oklahoma State defense that was really good last year. Lost some pieces, is in the 100s and a lot of different statistics, but is fifth in third down defense. We've seen that on display today. Robinson trying to fight for anything he can get. Does get back to the line of scrimmage. Samuela Tui Hala Maka makes the tackle, so it's going to bring up third and long again. Tui Hala Maka, nice job with the penetration. Nowhere for Bijan Robinson to go. Both these run defenses flexing here. Does Derek Mason bring pressure? They lead the Big 12 in sacks. Led the country last year. Ewers with pressure at his feet. Throws it incomplete. He was going for Worthy downfield. And it's fourth and ten. So they get the big play to start the drive out to midfield. But then three plays and punt. Five possessions, five punts. Who would have thought? Well, this is an excellent job by Trace Ford. You want to see what a bull rush is supposed to look like? Working on right tackle Christian Jones. He just runs right through him. And that's what forced that throw from Quinn. You were second time now in this half. Trace Ford starting to come to life and do a nice job rushing the passer. Punt is high and deep. Presley gets out of there. And it goes out of bounds inside the five. Out of bounds at the one. Inside the one. 
talking about the exploits of Tom Hutton. How about Daniel Trejo? A couple times here this half. Hitting Oklahoma State inside its 10. This is as close as you can get to being a touchback. Great camera work by guys. Wow. <laughs> what a punt. That was very, very impressive right there. Our Saturday night football game presented by Capital One is Minnesota Penn State in Happy Valley at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. The Nittany Lions trying to rebound from a loss to Michigan last week. What about Minnesota? Kind of falling off the map. Although Purdue's losing to Wisconsin. Yeah. You got Illinois leading the West, but maybe Minnesota can climb back into things. And to snap it from the one, they go two backs, and they hand it off to the first man through. It's Zach Middleton. Not like he's a big back or anything. He's only 200 pounds. That's just his fourth carry of the year. And Tavondre Sweat with the tackle after a gain of two. But it does give him a little room to breathe. He's thick, though, man. He's only about 5'8", 200 pounds or so. You got Ollie Gordon, the true freshman, in there as well in the backfield. He'll get it here, and he's out past the five. Keeps the feet moving, and they finally blow it dead at the seven-yard line. So Ollie Gordon just one attempt in each of his last two games. That's showing faith, though, in a guy who didn't have a big fumble earlier this season, giving him the ball at the three-yard line. Well, he's got a bright future. He's very talented. He's first team. All uniform off the bus. I mean, just looks the part, but you referenced that he had a fumble against Baylor. And man, one thing about Coach Gundy, if, if he doesn't trust you, he's not going to play you. And they've lost some trust in the true freshman. Third and four. See if they put Sanders in a run pass situation. High snap, Sanders in trouble. And he gets mauled by Overshone, thrown to the ground at the three yard line. Remember, they have a new center. Joe Mahalski starting for Preston Wilson today at that position. Well, Sanders saved a big time uh, play here. This snap over his head just to get his hands on it and possess it. That could have been six the other direction. And an outstanding job by DeMarvian Overshone, who has really shown up in this football game today. He is a punishing tackle. Holy smokes. It was almost disaster, though, boys. Oh. So let's see what Hutton does here, punting from his own end zone. Worthy under it, fields it at the midfield line. He's inside the 40-yard line, stiff arms, inside the 30, inside the 20 as he goes out of bounds. It all started with the Texas punt. Three and out, Worthy with a return of almost 30 yards, and the Longhorns are set up beautifully, leading by seven. Near the three-minute mark here in the third quarter. You've got TCU and Kansas State as the only unbeatens in conference play remaining, and they play tonight. Texas trying to get to four and one. The Longhorns have not won the Big 12 since 2009. The last time they played in the Big 12 championship game was 2018. They have a bye week after this one. They still have to play at K-State, and TCU comes to Austin. And Oklahoma State inches away from a Big 12 crown last year. Both these teams control their own destiny throughout the rest of the season. Bijan Robinson slips a tackle in the backfield, gets positive yardage down to the 15-yard line. Aussie on the tackle. Oklahoma State is at Kansas State next week. They've won 12 games in a row here. That's a school record. Their last home loss was against Texas two years ago. On second and six, Robinson again gets maybe one. That was Sean Michael Flanagan with the tackle. Third down. Good timing there from Flanagan as well. You're seeing safeties come up and insert themselves into the box. Derek Mason's made a little adjustment. Seeing Kendall Daniels there, Flanagan, good timing as they will get Bijan down quickly. Although he hurt himself on the play. When you hit B. John Robinson, who's over 100 yards rushing today. Not that much in the second half, but that's six consecutive 100 yard games for the Big 12 Player of the Year candidate. Third down and five for Texas at the 15. Yours with time over the middle. The pass was high and incomplete inside the 10. B. 
John Robinson, the intended receiver, Colin Oliver, had some pressure that time on yours, and it's fourth down. Texas will bring on the field goal team. Yeah, Nicholas Martin working man-to-man -man coverage on Bijan Robson. Simple little option route inside, angle route as he gets inside coverage. Ewers unable to connect. You mentioned it, Colin Oliver, Oliver with a nice pressure. So disappointing with that field position. I know. Wow. So he's just got to be playing the town. Huge stop there for Oklahoma State. A short field goal try here. 33 yards. There's some wind. And the kick hugs that right upright, but is good. And Texas extends its lead to 10, 34, 24, 210 remaining in the third quarter. second half. The special team's been a difference today, guys. I mean, that that's a special team's three points. I mean, right, you, you set it up with the punt that you referenced, a nice punt return from Worthy, and obviously you kick it through, but that's fascinating to see because that's been such a strength for Oklahoma State all season. And here today, it's been a huge strength for the Texas Longhorns. And I would have to imagine Jeff Banks, special teams coordinator, we've shown a couple of shots of him outside of he's been. He's got to be very proud of the way his units have performed here in this game. Oklahoma State doesn't lose consecutive games very often. Got off to a 5-0 start, ranked eighth going into last week's game. Had a big lead at TCU, ended up losing in double overtime. Trying to avoid dropping to 5-2 and two and 2-2 two and two in league action. Will Stone will kick off here for Texas. Texas trying to get to six and two. Won just five games all of last year. Went three and six in conference play. They'd be four and one in the league if they can get a victory here on the road. Nine and three all time in Stillwater as well. Touchback comes out to the 25. First, Kevin Nagandi. Dave, time now for our mayhem moment brought to you by All State to Death Valley Ole Miss in the red zone and driving Jackson Dart. Hit knees picked off. Joe Fouché, nice INT there, and that would lead to Jaden Daniels with the keeper in LSU. Up 31 to 20 in the fourth quarter. Back to you. Well, that would be a top 10 team going down. TCU plays tonight against Kansas State. Got Alabama trying to bounce back from a loss. Dropped to six in the polls, hosting Mississippi State. Look at, look at the play selection. Ten run plays, negative three yards. Sanders has to sidearm that, and it's complete for a first down past the 35. It's Ollie Gordon. And he gets about 15 yards to the 40-yard line. I get some confidence back from his coaching staff. Nice job securing that catch and getting the first down. Sixth catch of the year for the true freshman, Gordon. Sanders. And that one was off target. A diving attempt by Green. He could not come up with it. You wonder if there's anything wrong with Dominic Richardson or if they're just letting Ollie Gordon and Zach Middleton get opportunities to rush the ball here. Richardson has had a lot of snaps, though, in this game. I think he was a little banged up from that last game against TCU. Clearly he was in there for the duration of the first half, but a lot of Cowboys left that game battered and bruised. Sanders to the air on second and ten. Has a man. It's caught at the 40-yard line. It's great inside the 30. 25. Bryson Green has been the big play target today for the Cowboys. That goes for 36 yards. And that's Spencer Sanders. Waits. He's patient. Buys some time. Actually, off balance when he delivers this throw. And right on the money for Bryson Green. Back to pass again. Sanders. Pressure from a Gofu. He gets the pass away. And it's caught inside the five yard line by Stephon Johnson. Now they're saying no. It hit the dirt. The arm of the quarterback was hit. But it was underthrown just a bit. You're exactly right. It's going to be a go-fu off the backside. Good to see him back in this ball game. Good rush as Sanders trying to evade him. Hits that ball ever so slightly. Missed timing of the jump there. And 
Johnson unable to come up with that football. Let's watch. Did, did it come out? Hit the ground? Yeah, it hit the ground. Three of an incomplete pass is under further review. Now again, if you control right. the ball, it can hit the ground, but I, I don't know that he had control of it when it hit. Ruling in the field is incomplete. They are looking at They can look at that. I'll tell you who thinks he did catch it. That's Stephon Johnson. He thought he didn't initially. Let's take a look here. Arms underneath it. Tough to tell from that angle. The other angle that we showed you, it did look like the ball hit the ground, but he still may have had control of it. Yes. As long as the ground doesn't help aid you make the catch, right? Right. Correct. You can, The ball can't touch the ground. Let's take a look. Arms are clearly underneath the football. So you have it possessed. And boy, again, this goes back to something we had happen in the first half. Call on the field is important here. This is where you can tell that it hits the ground. Looks like he's got possession, though, Dave. That's tough. Really tough can to you overturn tell. it? I mean, is that is that indisputable? Beyond all doubt, I don't think so. It might be a catch, but I, I'm just saying I don't I know agree. that from a video standpoint, they can say with certainty that that just like it would have been ruled a catch, right. there's not evidence that would overturn it. And it did look like initially they ruled it a catch, and then an official stepped in and changed the call. Watch to Gilbo at the end. I think Gilbo tipped it too. Man, Stephon Johnson has made some huge yes. plays. Just the fact that he got close yep. with that after Gilbo touched it at the last second to have the concentration to even have a shot at that. Really good concentration by him, seeing that ball in. I think it's going to be just like we kind of talked about, like ruling on the field probably going to hold to be true. Just tough to tell, and there wasn't a definitive angle to full a series. Review, the ruling on the field stands, second down. Again, the crowd doesn't like it, but you, you, you have to have indisputable video evidence beyond all doubt. There was doubt, and that's why they couldn't overturn that. So... It is second and 10 at the 25 yard line. And again, we're seeing Ollie Gordon in at running back, not Richardson. The Cowboys down 10, so they're in position to at least get points here. Tanner Brown had made 16 consecutive field goals until a miss at the end of the first half. It's good to see Gordon. This is such a big moment. Second half trying to come back, and he's the most talented of the running backs, that's for certain. That's Presley coming in motion, getting it on the jet sweep. Upended at the 22-yard line by Barron. Third down and seven coming up after a three-yard pickup. And a heavy dose of true freshman here in this ball game. Raylan Presley trying to find different ways to get the football in his hands. Dude's a little water bug, man. <laughs> Out of Bigsby, man. He's one of the, I mean, his highlight reels from high school. Yeah. Unbelievable what that young man can do with the football in his hands. His older brother Brennan is the team's leading receiver. So third down and eight. Sanders, play fake, looks, goes to the end zone, and it's nearly intercepted by Jamison. He was going for Stephon Johnson, but almost got picked off in the end zone for the second time in this game. And Oklahoma State will have to settle for a field goal try. Well, it's really good position on the football by Deshaun Jamison. He's got inside position. He kind of turns in the wide receiver, and it's really well done by Johnson and knocked his ball loose. He turns into the DB at the end of that game. And we got another throw here in the end zone that Spencer Sanders wishes he could have back. So Tanner Brown... First miss of any kind at the end of the first half. The miss from 48 yards. This is a 40-yard attempt. And it's good. Oklahoma State back within seven in the final stages of the third quarter. That's a good stop, though, by Texas. Defense and only gives up 18 points per game, which is good for 21st in the country. We talked about earlier, Gary Patterson, longtime great Hall of Fame coach at TCU. One of the big offseason acquisitions for Steve Sarkeesian was bringing him in as, as an offensive. Actually, he's got a special title, like special assistant, assistant to the to head, head coach. coach. Yeah. And, you know, we talked to defensive coordinator Pete Kukowski, and he was quick to say, man, he's made a big difference. And they've had a really good working relationship together. And, you know, working on some of the match zone coverages, his experience and knowledge of these teams. It's really paid dividends for this Texas defense this season. Well, you think about where the TCU program is today. 
It's in big part because of, of Gary Patterson and what he did with that program. He told me today on the field, guys, I said, how you enjoyed it? He goes, I love it. The record doesn't go next to my name, and when we sit in the academic meetings and something goes wrong, I just say, yeah, we got to get that fixed. <laughs> Some of our meetings, too, with, with Patterson, when he was head coach, we, when you do a home game at TCU, I mean, you get the red carpet rolled out to you. And, oh, yeah. You get uh, Gary Patterson singing country music as well, if you're lucky. Touchback, it'll come out to the 25 for Texas. Let's see if this Longhorn offense can catch fire. It feels like they've been a shoelace tackle away from breaking off a big play in the second half because in the first half we had all these big plays, but not in the second half. We've had overthrows by Ewers. Oklahoma State done a better job up front stopping the run. Bijan Robinson, 18 carries, eight of those for one yard or less, and a lot of those in the second half. See, that's where I'll push back. There has been big plays in the second half. They just come on the defensive side. <laughs> Spoken like a former nose tackle. You love one-yard runs. Ewers put the ball on the ground, scoops it up, and throws the pass complete to his tight end, Sanders. Out to the 32. Gain of seven yards on the play. Brought down by Xavier Benson. In fact, that snap might have hit Worthy as he was coming across in motion. Ewers picked it up off the ground. Found the big tight end. Tavion Sanders. I've been surprised how little usage we've seen out of him today. See if Texas snaps it before the end of the quarter. They will, and the ball's on the ground again, and Roshan Johnson falls on it for a loss at the 25. That is a seven-yard setback. That's the end of the third quarter. They didn't have to snap it, but they elected to do it with about a second remaining in the quarter, and it cost them seven yards. Big third and long when we come back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Welcome back to a sold-out Boone Pickens Stadium in Stillwater. A huge game in the Big 12 between top 20 teams. Neither team with a touchdown in the third quarter, just a total of six points. Texas has a seven-point lead as we start the fourth. They pass Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville, and a huge third down and ten after a seven-yard loss on second down just before the end of the quarter. This is where this Oklahoma State D-line can be impactful. Excellent rushers on this unit. Ewers to throw, pressure up the middle, his pass is high. Again, overthrown, going for Worthy. Two Oklahoma State defenders almost collide. Cam Smith and Jason Taylor. 14 overthrows we have unofficially by Ewers. Ben Kapinski, the walk-on. A nice inside move over there on Christian Jones. It's a little pressure, but that's just a misfire once again. Ball sailing high for Quinn Ewers for the majority of this game. Trejo has been really good today, punting the football. Presley immediately calling for the fair catch, has it at the 34. So, Oklahoma State, another opportunity to tie the game when we come back to Stillwater. Here's one of 14 overthrows. It started like this, and it stayed like this throughout. This is on the first possession. He overthrows Worthy for a pick. And it got worse after that. I mean, there have been several times, and I'm sure some of this is on the receivers, too, but... He has had a lot of errant passes in this game. Some win today as well, but we've talked about it. A lot of inexperience from Quinn Ewers' his first true road game, and man, the struggles have been real. Here's Jaden Nixon getting the carry, and he gets dropped after a gain of one. Ojimo with the takedown. Again, no Dominic Richardson. There's Hudson Card to the right of Quinn Ewers. Hudson started three games this year. Won the West Virginia game. Pass behind. Nixon incomplete. So it's third down. And eight. Setting up that screen one more time. And, you know, Jaden Nixon in the ball game. And I just, I don't really know if I love where he was set up for that screen. Dominic Richardson's been so good running it this year. But it's a nice job to get your hand up and get, get on the football. Try to avoid a three and out again. Five-man rush. Pass is caught for a first down. To the 45 yard line. It's John Paul Richardson. Thrown down by Tucker Dorsey, but he was able to move the chains. The pressure in the face of Spencer Sanders from Byron Murphy. Stands strong in the pocket and delivers a
a strike to Richardson for a big first down. From the 47, Sanders again over the middle. It's caught into Texas territory. Down to the 45 is Stephon Johnson. A star perhaps being born here in Stillwater with this true freshman has been outstanding. More catches today than he had the whole season coming in. Not afraid to go over the middle. Coach Dunn told me before the game his nickname is Boogie. Boogie is balling here today. Second and two as they are in Longhorn territory trailing by seven. Sanders with a short throw and a great hit that time by Barron closing in on Nixon to keep him from getting the first down. At the 45 yard line it's going to be third and about two. Excellent open field tackle. I think Spencer Sanders as a runner comes into play here. Going to go big personnel bringing Braden Cassidy into the game the Cowboy back 11 carries on the day for Spencer Sanders so Jake Schultz two tight end heavy set here for Oklahoma State maybe four down territory as well early here in the fourth quarter instead of run play and they get the first down inside the 40 yard line Jaden Nixon to the 35 a nine yard gain a third and one right side of the offensive line right tackle Drake Springfield does a good job washing it all down a nice pick up there by Nixon now they go empty they throw it to Nixon out there two big bodies in front they fake it that way and then the pass is behind Brandon Cassidy or Brayton Cassidy excuse me does have two catches on the season Jake Schultz was also out there not sure exactly which receiver he was going for Guys, you guys were wondering just about, you know, what's happened to number 20, Dominic Richardson. It's very difficult and tight on that sideline to get behind, but I've been scouring it, and I can't find number 20 on the sideline. Yeah, Tom. I don't know if he's in the locker room or what's taking place here. Yeah. Bobby Gordon coming in now. Been looking for him as well, Tommy. Uh, up here with the Badox, don't see him. So second and 10 on the 36. And it will be Gordon getting the call. Grab from behind, but he breaks the tackle. However, help comes, and down goes Gordon. So a gain of one. It'll bring up third down and nine. See what kind of a play call we get and whether Oklahoma State thinks it's in four-down territory. Big 99, Keandre Coburn just continues to put together a nice ball game. Very disruptive. In the middle of that Texas defense, makes several plays here in the second half. Johnson's been the go-to guy, but, man, they trust John Paul Richardson. They're stacked to the field. On third and nine, Sanders back to throw. Has time. Now takes off. He's got running room in the first down. Inside the 20, and he gets clocked at the 19-yard line. No flag. Michael Taft with the hit. Oklahoma State is in the red zone. Gain of 16. Well, man, this is just great recognition as they're setting up the screen to the field. And the defense completely goes with the screen game. Wide open running lane. And Spencer Sanders takes advantage for a huge third down conversion. There have been some issues in the red zone. They were sixth in the country coming in. At an interception thrown by Sanders in the first half. Here's Sanders over the middle and traffic. It's caught inside the 10 and down to the four is John Paul Richardson. First and goal, Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State in prime real estate here inside the 10. Let's see, that's that same slant route that he missed on in the first half that he would have been a walk-in touchdown. Corrected at that time. They bring in a couple of their cowboy backs, Schultz and Cassidy. First down and goal from the five-yard line. They're allowing Texas to substitute after Oklahoma State did. Empty set now for Sanders. And Sanders pitches it. And now Bryson Green in trouble, rolling to the right, and he gets knocked down at the 11-yard line. A trick play that's a disaster. A loss of five or six. Oh, man, Casey Dunn digging into his bag of tricks, and it's excellent defense. They wanted to throw this back to Spencer Sanders. He tried to slip out, but it's extremely well played by a couple of different Texas defenders. Barron was out there, Crawford out there. Nice job identifying what Oklahoma State was trying to do. And sometimes you can outthink yourself. Getting a little too cute there inside the 10-yard line. And your first and goal on the five. Now it's second and goal from the 10. Sanders to throw. Looking over the middle end zone.
Oklahoma State. And this crowd absolutely loving it as they come alive. When you need a big play, you trust the guy that has the respect enough to ask your permission to date your daughter. No question. And you see him come inside in motion. Nobody accounts for him in the Texas defense. A blown coverage. And Spencer Sanders takes advantage and finds Brandon Presley for a big Oklahoma State touchdown. We mentioned that in the first half with Casey Dunn, the offensive coordinator. His daughter, Lauren, dating Brennan Presley. And point after away from time this game. Go ahead, Lukes. Yeah, I was just going to say the, the loss of five yards on, on, the, on the trick play actually helped them there, Dusty. Because now you have the open seam. They would have run out of real estate being within the five. It would have been a totally different approach. So you're saying it was all part of the strategy for all Casey Dunn. All part of the strategy. More real estate gave more, hey guys, Dunn, <laughs> more opportunities to Casey Dunn. Hey guys, Mahalski is shaken up. So... You're already down your center in Preston yep. Wilson. Now Mahalski shaking up, although he's not the long snapper. Matt, Matt Hembro is the long snapper. It'll be Eli Russ who would come in. He started last week because Mahalski was already banged up, but man, the hits just keep on coming for the health for this Cowboys football team. Tanner Brown. He's money. And the game is tied at 34 after a 12 play, 66 yard scoring drive. Well, the Oklahoma State defense has come alive in the second half, and so has the offense. Big touchdown for the Pokes to tie this thing up. College football on ABC is presented by Arby's. Arby's, we have the meats. Oklahoma State trying to win its 13th consecutive home game, the last loss against Texas two years ago. And you look at what both coaches have done in one-score games. Now, again, not as many attempts for Steve Sarkeesian. Mike Gundy, 46 and 27. When these teams have played recently, they're all one-possession games. And how about the difference in the defense for Oklahoma State in the second half, holding Texas to 36 yards of total offense. Quinn Ewers is seven for his last 19 passing up in the field of play. Taken on the four-yard line. Keelan Robinson past the 20, trying to get outside. And he was knocked to the ground around the 30-yard line. The last drive, Spencer Sanders was fantastic. Nice run here by Jaden Nixon, but a key third down pickup by Spencer Sanders with his legs. Had a couple of nice passes. Fired a dart to Richardson to get him set up inside the 10, and then final touchdown toss to Brennan Presley. The senior has been excellent throughout this ball game, and we'll see if the young freshman will see what he's made of here on the road this game time. All right, first true road start. Going to hand it off to Bijan Robinson, just his seventh carry of the second half. And look at him carry everybody. A gain of 11 and a first down. His best run by far in the second half. That's what they've got to get back to. We go back to the counter play, and it's really all Bijan here, as there's not much there initially, but continues to turn the legs and get a nice pickup. They give it to him again, and Oklahoma State a little bit better that time at the point of attack with Colin Clay making the hit two yards downfield. Robinson over 100 yards, but again, a lot of those were at halftime when he had 93 yards on 13 carries. Well, that rush yard disparity, first half to second half, that's glaring. Really, it was just explosive plays in the first half. Three touchdowns given up of 40 plus yards. On second and eight, Ewers to the air, facing a four man rush. Flushed out of the pocket, being chased, and just throws it away. It'll be third down and eight. With nobody open down the field for Quinn Ewers. He waited and tried to buy some time before ultimately Tyler Lacey was able to apply some pressure, but excellent job on the back end. That Oklahoma State Cowboy defense. Yours just has not looked comfortable throwing the ball here this afternoon. He doesn't like to be on the move. He needs to be on time and in rhythm. That's not his game outside of the pocket. Texas two for 13 on third down. This is third and eight. Jordan Whittington, a big third down target. Yours to throw. Looking. Fires. It's tipped at the line and incomplete. Waving the finger says not today. Pressure doesn't come. But like I mentioned earlier, if you can't get home, find a way to get in the throwing lane. Does a good job.
job shutting his rush down, works back to the quarterback and gets his hand up for a huge pass breakup. Here's the punt. They almost got to it. I said three and out. They did get a first down on the first play with Bijan Robinson, but then three plays later, they punt. And not a great kick that time by Trejo. Oklahoma State will have pretty good field position. Only a 25-yarder. And the Cowboys with 8.38 to go. A chance to take the lead when we come back. He's in. 66. Coming up later tonight on ABC, it's our Saturday night football game presented by Capital One. 16th ranked Penn State hosting Minnesota, 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific, ABC, and the ESPN app. So Steve Sarkeesian's teams have lost four times and leading by 10 points or more, and they led 31-17 with three minutes to go in the first half. They've scored three points since. Oklahoma State ball and a swing pass as Nixon is wrapped up beautifully by Jalen Ford for a loss of one. Oklahoma State's center who started this game, Joe Mahalski, got injured on the last possession. He is out there, but no blocking by anybody that time. That swing, that's a great play in space by Jalen Ford. Pump fake, Sanders looking over the middle. It's incomplete. Richardson had to go down to try to catch that ball. And just like that, it's third and 11. Yeah, one that Spencer Sanders really wishes he could have back. He had Richardson open, throws it low. And Richardson, typically such a sure-handed receiver, unable to go down and make that catch. He knew it, too, telling Richardson, hey, man, that one's on me, pointing to his chest. Gosh, he wishes he could have that. Third and 11 for Oklahoma State from its 35-yard line. 7 of 16 on third down today. Sanders pressure up the middle. He just has to throw it away. Byron Murphy broke free and got in the face of Sanders. A Texas defense responds, forcing an immediate three and out. A huge stop, and it's inside pressure right away. You mentioned it, 90 Byron Murphy. Simple chop rip. Going to work right up the field. Is able to beat the guard, Maturko, making Spencer Sanders flush. And you got Devondre Sweat right there. Nice defensive stop there for the Longhorns. So Hutton on to punt. Been an adventure in the kicking game with the wind. Xavier Worthy, excellent punt returner, is deep for Texas. Toward the sideline in front of the Longhorns bench, it lands out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Back after this. Nobody could get a stop in the first half. And now just one touchdown in the second half. That was by Oklahoma State on the last drive. Dave Pash, Jesse Dvorak, Tom Lugan is down on the field. If you're Steve Sarkeesian, is this the time where you just feed B. John Robinson down the field to get you in scoring range? You've got to lean on your best player, one of the best running backs in all of college football. I'd be surprised if we don't see a heavy dose of B. John Robinson. Just hasn't happened in the second half. They got 11 yards the first play of the last drive. They went to him on the next play, only gained two, and then they started throwing the ball. And again, Quinn Ewers has struggled mightily through the air. Looks like maybe a broken play. Either that or defined play action, whatever it works. And it's Billingsley downfield with his first catch of the season. He was suspended the first six games of the year. It's a gain of 20. Boy, deep over route there for Jaleel Billingsley. Excellent hands going up and getting this and a perfectly placed football from Quinn Ewers. Shrugging off the earlier deficiencies and fired a strike there on first down. Sarka saying, well, they're going to expect us to give it to Bijan Robinson, so let's play action. And it even looked like it was a little bit of a broken play. Now they give it to Robinson, and he's got the first down into Oklahoma. State territory in two plays. They're at the 45-yard line. It's a 13-yard run. Just the patience. It just kind of picks and finds his way. Allows this hole to open up. Watch him just boop, boop. He just hops around. Then the burst and explosion once he finds the hole. Nice piece of running there for another first down. Leads the Big 12 in rushing. Fifth in the country in rushing touchdowns with 11 six straight 100-yard games. Junior from Tucson, Arizona. First and 10 at the Oklahoma State 45. Inside seven minutes to go. Robinson again between the tackles downhill inside the 40. And nine yards for Robinson down to the 
36. They got their big personnel, and again, 92 is wearing that number, but he's typically 69. He's an offensive tackle. It's Andre Carrick, and he ran right behind him. Another nice jump cut and vision for a quality pickup on first down. Robinson to the sideline. Roshan Johnson gets the call here. Nice move, picking up the first down. He's a vet, almost 2,000 career rushing yards, 20 career touchdowns on the ground, including today. Next snap will come around the six-minute mark as they are now at the 31-yard line of Oklahoma State. Kyle Flood told us, we're a running football team. Big personnel there for a couple of snaps and what quality runs there. Moving the ball. A young offensive line really growing up, too, versus a very active defensive front that's had the best of them for most of this half. They start two true freshmen up front. Back to Bijan Robinson. Stumbles to the 28. So a gain of three, but they're taking time off the clock. Inside six minutes to go. Texas trying to get to six and two, four and one in league action. Right now, TCU and Kansas State atop the Big 12 standings, both the three and oh, but they play one another tonight. Oklahoma State, record of 5-1, and 2-1 and one in league play with a lone loss last week in double overtime at TCU. Taking the clock down inside 5-20 for this next snap. Ewers to the air and toward the sideline incomplete. Keelan Robinson, don't know if he stumbled out of his break, but again, not on the same page with the quarterback. Well, it's a long throw for Quinn Ewers. Far hash outside the numbers, and you referenced that Keelan Robinson, typically a running back, lined up out there. He turned inside, pass went outside, and it nets an incompletion. Third down and seven. It would be about a 46-yard field goal try from here if they can't move the ball. Will Oklahoma State bring, bring pressure here on Ewers? They don't. They rush four. Ewers with time. Deep ball. Got a man in the end zone. Incomplete. Where they seem to stumble. And another overthrow by Ewers. And it's fourth down. Wow. Xavier Worthy, you see the speed. He had a step. I got to say, this is on him losing his feet. That ball's a catchable football from Quinn Ewers. Slightly overthrown, but as he stopped, he kind of slowed down. And he looked back. He lost his footing, falls down, and the pass falls incomplete. That's a ball we've seen Xavier Worthy make in the past. 16 targets, just four catches for Worthy, and now a 46-yard field goal try from Auburn to get Texas the lead, and it's no good. May have been blocked. Either that or a dead hook. We're still tied with five minutes to go. Boy, this place has come alive. They've been here all day. It's homecoming. So many Oklahoma State Cowboys fans here in attendance. They love what they're seeing here in this second half. Somebody get a hand on it. Hard Tough to tell. To tell. With that calling play, 93. I think he just shanked a guy who was standing right behind him. I think he just hooked it. Well, nobody touched that football. That's just a miss. Good call by Utah. And now Spencer Sanders, veteran quarterback. Been in this spot many a times, getting the football back under five minutes with a chance to take the lead. And without their veteran, Dominic Richardson, a running back, who's got three touchdowns today, we have not seen him at all here since the third quarter. It's true freshman Ollie Gordon in it running back. He'll get the carry here. Past the 30 to the 32. Four yards on the ground. Coburn and Overshown team up on the tackle. Each team with three timeouts. 4.45 to go and counting. Sanders will throw. Incomplete. Going for Bryson Green. Third down and six. And the clock stopped with 4.23 left. That looked like a little bit of miscommunication with Bryson Green. Looked like Sanders thought he was going to run more of a hitch and have a shorter route. Green pushed it all the way up to the six. And quarterback receiver on the same page. They're going fast, aren't they? Up to the line of scrimmage. Checking it out. And clock not running because of the incompletion. Third down and six for Oklahoma State. Texas rushes four over the middle. Sanders in traffic. It's caught for a first down by John Paul Richardson. There are actually two receivers in the area. Now there's a Texas player down. Pressure 
his face. It didn't matter. Ojibo is barreling down on Sanders, stands firm, and he hits John Paul Richardson over the middle with a big flex afterward. Huge conversion. Another tight window throw for Spencer Sanders. And it looks like it's Gilbo. Friendly fire there, colliding at the end with Overshone. But you, you touched on this during one of the breaks about Spencer Sanders. This is a guy that four-year starting quarterback, yeah. first-team All-Big 12, battling through injury the last couple weeks, didn't practice at all going into the TCU game and almost led them to a victory. Did practice this week, looks healthier, but he's been hit a lot in this game. But he bounces back and continues to make plays for this offense. He's bounced back throughout his career. I mean, this is a guy that, you know, he had a lot of issues turning the football over. And then latter half of last season, really from the Texas game on, started playing great football, had some turnovers in the Big 12 championship, bounced back in the Fiesta Bowl, was fantastic against Notre Dame. And he has been one of the best quarterbacks in this league throughout the course of this season. And boy, he is stepping up in a big moment here this afternoon. Just to remind everybody what's at stake here, TCU, Kansas State play tonight, both 3-0. Loser of this game will be at two defeats in conference play. It's interesting, we showed this at the start of the game, and look, we got a long way to go, but if Texas somehow wins out based on projections, they, they still have like a 40% chance to make the college football playoff with two losses, because one of those was by a point to Alabama. I know Longhorn fans aren't thinking about that right now. They're worried about the last 4-17, but it tells you that based on percentages, Texas is still very much not only in the Big 12 championship race, but in the college football playoff race, although no two-loss team has ever made the college football playoff. we got to take care of business here on the road and get a win for that to even be a reality. Oklahoma State's in that conversation, too. One I loss. Mean, they got one, one loss. loss. You know, a double overtime loss on the road. And by the way, I don't know if you noticed, when Brendan Presley caught that last touchdown, he kind of grabbed his hamstring. He has not been back in the ball game. So I get another injury for this Cowboys football team trying to overcome. He's the third receiver that's been hurt since the TCU game. Braden Johnson didn't suit up today. Neither did Jaden Bray. He's back in at the slot right okay. now at the bottom of your screen. Good. Great to see him back in the game. First time we've seen him. Back to pass goes Sanders. And going to dump it off to the back. Missing Texas defenders. And it's Ollie Gordon for a first down into Texas territory for 15 yards to the 45. He's a very talented true freshman, and you saw why with that great individual effort. Great opportunity he's been afforded here today. And, man, is he making the most of it, making guys miss out on the perimeter. From the 45 of Texas, going to be Gordon getting the carry. And he's down to the 41 for about four yards, brought down by Overshone. Keep in mind here as we get closer to the three-minute mark, Tanner Brown, their kicker, made a 52-yarder last week. In overtime at TCU, he's got only one miss on the season. That was today. Sanders has a completion. And Jaron Thompson right I, there. That's, that's bad. 
That's absolutely bad. You're a safety. You got to come over and finish that tackle. Finish off Bryson Green, but instead, it's heels to the field. He's off to the races, and it's a celebration in Stillwater with about three minutes to play. I'll tell you, Dusty, it, the slant route, remember how poorly he threw the route down here on the five-yard yeah. line? Yeah. He has not missed one since. Not one. He's been perfect on the slant. Now, if you're Steve Sarkeesian, you got 309. Are you still running the ball, or are you putting it in the hands of a Quinn Ewers who has struggled mightily? Seven touchdown passes the last two games since coming back from missing three games due to injury. But today, it's been a rough go for the most part for Ewers. The answer is both, right? I mean, you got time, you've got timeouts. You can run your offense at its best. And Steve Sarkeesian said last week, winning that game against Iowa State, he felt that that was a sign that this team had grown up. We'll see if that holds true here in Stillwater. Backs against the wall and facing a seven-point deficit here late. Logan Ward devoted deep. Keelan Robinson back for Texas. Robinson decides to run it out from three yards deep. He's at the 15, and he's dumped at the 22. Let's go to the studio and Kevin. Dave reminding our audience our primetime game under the lights. Oh! It's a whiteout in Happy Valley, Bug. Yeah, there's nothing like a whiteout. The crowd is going to be electric, but that defense has to play well and stop the run of Minnesota. Going old school, one of the best uniforms in all of college football. Number 16, Penn State. We are! <laughs> Minnesota, Penn State! Back to you, Dave. Guys, Quinn Ewers, 14 of 37, 244 yards. He does have the two touchdowns, but also has an interception. At halftime, Ewers had thrown for 190, so just 54 second-half passing yards. From the 21, Ewers with a short throw across the middle and a first down out to the 34-yard line for Jatavion Sanders, the tight end. Soft zone coverage there from Oklahoma State. Those backers set way deep. And you saw Billingsley slide underneath. Second reception for him in the last two drives. Good start to this possession. Three timeouts for Texas, 248 and counting. Bijan Robinson hit in the backfield and down he goes. Gets knocked to the ground by Mason Cobb for a loss of three. Boy, Mason Cobb comes downhill right now. Big tackle for loss. Nowhere for Bijan Robinson to go. Talking with his staff, he was like a sponge sitting behind Malcolm Rodriguez, soaking up everything he possibly could from the All-American linebacker. He's been a key piece of this defense all year and a big stop on first down. Ewers steps up, has room to run past the 40-yard line. Ewers in Oklahoma State territory all the way to the 34-yard line. But a flag is down in the backfield. Holding offense number 70, 10-yard penalty, second down. Christian Jones, the right tackle, was holding Trace Ford, and that negates what would have been about a 60-yard run. Huge pickup there for Quinn Ewers, but Trace Ford, he's been a problem all second half. Christian Jones has been struggling. You see there go bull to rip. Ah. Flag comes out on the hold. Trace Ford continues to make his presence felt. Quinn Ewers could run like that. That was a nice pickup with his legs, but man, penalties been a problem. Second and 22. Ewers was getting hit, so he just had to throw it away. Colin Clay with pressure. And now it's third down and 22. Obviously in four down territory with 154 to go. And we've talked about it. True freshman offensive lineman. That was on Cole Hudson, 93. Colin Clay with an excellent arm over inside move. There was pressure in the face of Quinn Ewers immediately. This is third and very, very long. I sit back and you drop eight here. Trust Trace Ford, Colin Oliver, Tyler Lacey. Those three, they can still get home with pressure. And Oklahoma State's going to call a timeout here. Talk about this on defense. Oklahoma State calls their first timeout. 30 seconds. So this is interesting here for Sark. Yep. With a minute 54 to go, if you don't move the ball at all, and you're in fourth and 22, do you punt, knowing you can, with three timeouts, get the ball back, you may not have a lot of time. How 
you handling this play call on third down? If well, if you're, you're in fourth and 22, you're putting the football. I think the question is, do we see him try to maybe get half of it? Right. Maybe get a chunk, 10, 12 yards here, and set yourself up for fourth and manageable. I mean, look, he's an offensive-minded coach. I think he believes in his team, even though it hasn't gone great. I would I would think Sark is looking at this potential four-down territory. So maybe do you see a screen, something like that, where maybe you can get a chunk play, 10, 12 yards, get it to fourth and 10, so it's a little bit more reasonable to go for it there. No question. I think that's exactly what you'll see here. And reminder, you know, both these running backs are really good receivers out of the backfield, both Roshan Johnson as well as B. John Robinson that we've talked about here throughout the course of the day. But I would be surprised if, you know, again, you don't get anything on this play. You're putting the football, but I think you got to look at this, try to cut it in half and try to set yourself up where you have a realistic opportunity to convert on a potential fourth down. All right, because if you go for it, you don't give it. You're, you're basically giving Oklahoma State three points and the game's over, even though you do have those three timeouts. We'll see what yours does in third and 22. Over the middle, it's caught at the 40-yard line. Short is Sanders by about four yards, but much more reasonable. They get 18 yards, and we'll go for it on fourth and four with a minute 40 to go. Nice throw over the middle there for Quinn Ewers, a bullet to his big tight end. Ewers on fourth and four. Turn that for a touchdown, but there's a penalty flag. False start. Offense number zero. Five-yard penalty. Still fourth down. Big mistake by Sanders on fourth and four. Thankfully, he did, though. If he doesn't, yeah. that's a pick six the other way, and this ball game is over. A little flinch there by Jatavion Sanders. Best mistake he ever made. No question about that. Very well read there by Mason Cobb. And again, you know that these running backs catch the ball well in the backfield. I think they have to put some time back off on the clock. The, the clock ran. That's penalty number 13. Yes. Zero on Oklahoma State. They haven't committed one. And Texas has 13. I don't think I've ever seen that before. That many penalties in one game when the other team has zero? Sign of a really good football coach. And as we've talked about, that's exactly what Mike Gundy is. Beaten, battered, team being held together with bubble gum and tape, finding themselves with a stop here. Potential big win against Texas. Now, he still had three timeouts, but... Doesn't look like they're going to put any time on the clock. Fourth down and eight. Yours from the pocket. Throws a lob. Looks like Colin Oliver is going to be able to get a little bit of pressure on Quinn Ewers, but he was looking for B. John Robinson on that corner route. And Jason Taylor, that safety, reading the ball the entire way, steps in front of that, and I hope it's not him that's down. He took a weird, when he came down, his knee kind of buckled there on him. I really hope it's not him. He grabbed his knee right there as he goes down. Oh, man, that would be devastating if Jason Taylor moving forward isn't okay. I mean, he started the game with a pick, huge pick here late, though he would have just knocked it down. They would have had better field position, but I know he wasn't thinking that. They could make a play, and as we talked earlier, this back seven, essentially all brand new, except Jason Taylor. A lot of other players, a couple other players, they transfer, and he said, I want to come back. I want to finish my career here at Oklahoma State. He's been tremendous, and man, you just hope that he's going to be okay. You make an interesting point. Had he knocked the ball yeah. down, Oklahoma State would have had the ball, I think it was around the 40-yard line. So even if Texas would have gotten a stop with the three timeouts, Oklahoma State could have kicked a field goal to make it a two-possession game. Can Texas get a stop? The ball would have been on the Texas 36, we're being told. So they would have been in field goal range there for Tanner Brown to extend it to a 10-point game. As, as you see, unfortunately, it is Jason Taylor who was injured on the play. 
Guy's just got such a knack for making plays. You go back a couple of years ago, he had a scoop and score against Kansas State. I mean, he had just key plays all throughout his career. We've seen it here once again here today. And, and what do the Oklahoma State coaches tell us about their offense? They said, we have to find a way to close out a game by running the ball. Well, they can do it right here. Texas defensively, can they get a stop and give their offense one more try? Jaden Nixon is the running back. He gets it on first down, and that's a good start for the Cowboys out to the 44. Steve Sarkeesian will use his first timeout, stopping the clock with 118 Texas to go. Texas calls their first timeout of the half, 30 seconds. Well, how about the turnaround? for this Oklahoma State Cowboy defense in the second half. I mean, Derek Mason, I mean, remember, Derek Mason comes in this season, tired, brought in, and they lose a lot of pieces from that defense that was just so impressive a season ago. And, you know, they, they've had some real bright moments. It was the first three quarters against TCU last week. Kind of ran out of gas. Slow start here today, giving up some explosives. But here in the second half, this defense has really answered the bell, limiting this Texas offense just three points in the second half. And those three points really, you know, came off a of special team. It was a great kick return that got them in prime real estate to get those three. It was 31-17 with about three minutes to go in the second quarter. Texas was leading. Going to run it again over Schoen. Was in there first against Jaden Nixon. Gets maybe a yard. Another timeout by Sark. That leaves Texas with one. One eleven to go. Timeout. Third down. Texas, their second. At about six. Coming up. 30-second timeout. Take a look at some of these plays I'm talking about. Derek Mason getting an inspired effort. And really, it's the D-line. Veteran group. Tyler Lacey there on a stop. Trace Ford, who's been marred by injury in his career. He's come up huge here in the second half. And we talked about Jason Taylor, the play you just saw, that pick to get him the ball back. Been an outstanding turnaround for this defense, and, and Derek Mason's got to be very proud of the effort that this defense has put forth. And if Oklahoma State wins this game, you wonder, are Texas fans saying, oh, no? Last year, we, we got up to this great start, lost six in a row. It, it does feel different the way Texas has played so far. They look like a much better team than a year ago, but this would be a tough one to swallow when you have a 14-point lead on the road and you can't close it out. Big third down, a first down for Oklahoma State for all intents and purposes wins the game for the home team. Sanders be a runner here. Nope. Off the right side, gain of about two for Jaden Nixon, and now it's fourth down and four. With 1.07 to go as Sark calls Texas's Texas final timeout. Last time out of the game. That's a great stop there by a Texas minute. defense to give the offense another opportunity with a punt here coming up. And again, I hate to go back to it, but a Jason Taylor play. You love yeah. the fact that he makes the play, but again, it's tough in that spot, right? You sure. make the interception, you want to help ensure, you know, you bat it down, ball bounces funny, and maybe it goes to Texas, but you're that's in field goal range. completion, you're in field goal range. Absolutely. Now, Oklahoma State does have one of the best punters in the country, Tom Hutton, who did not have a touchback all season until a punt in the third quarter. He's going to try to pin Texas deep. Texas blocked a punt in the first half, and they've had a lot of pr pressure on Hutton and had other opportunities to block it. The other piece of this, too, Jason Taylor being helped off. That's your best secondary player not going to be a part of this drive. Texas going to come after this one. Snap to Hutton, and he gets it away. And it's angled toward the Texas sideline. Boy, where did this cross? It went into the first row of the stands. This is going to be tough for the official to try to gauge where to spot this ball. He stops at the 24-yard line. So 76 yards away for Texas to try to tie the game with a minute to go and no timeouts. Uncharacteristic of Tom Hutton. He rushed it. Man, that ball just a bit of a shake. I know he's trying to angle it and not allow for return from Xavier worthy but he hasn't had his best day certainly not no. as usual no Quinn Ewers man he gets one more opportunity see what you got kid huge chance right here on the road minutes ago down a touchdown but again as you said Jason Taylor out of the game Thomas Harper did not play today because of an injury he's another starter Ewers pass incomplete again the receivers not on the 
same page. You saw Whittington and Tariq Milton both stop and look at one another as the ball hit the ground. 56 seconds to go. Well, Whittington looked to the outside, and then as you mentioned, Milton looked to the inside, and the ball lands right in between both of them. Another misfire. Was that miscommunication or just a bad throw? I, I think it's miscommunication. You had two guys running routes right into each other. That's what it looked like. Second and ten. Three more chances for yours. Pressure up the middle. Long throw yours is on the money and caught. Milton, his first catch of the day, steps out at the 36. 52 seconds left. Wait, excellent throw here by Quinn Ewers on the corner route. Perfect placement as Milton completes the catch and steps out of bounds. First down on the 36. Ewers back to throw. Pressure up the middle. Throws a deep pass and just throws it away. We've seen him do that a lot when there's some pressure on him. Just hoist it out of bounds. Lives for the next down. 45 seconds remaining. Colin Oliver. See him coming from all over. It's him inside. Last year was just such a menace with 11 and a half sacks as a true freshman. Continues to play really good football and key pressure there on first down. Texas down seven. No timeouts. 45 seconds left. Ball on the Longhorn. 36. Second down and 10. Ewers sidearms it. Caught at the 45 and out of bounds is Sanders. He got the first down, gain of 10 at the 46. Clock stop with 40 seconds remaining. Boy, Jatavion Sanders, how about that catch radius? Going up, grabbing that at tie point, and nice awareness to get out of bounds as quickly as possible. When you have shown a lot of poise on this drive, guys. Yeah, a couple good throws. Yeah, been That's accurate. It. Another one. Texas man false start that will be penalty number 14 for Texas zero for Oklahoma State <laughs> don't remember seeing it that staggering in one direction and not the other that's never false start offense number 76 five-yard penalty first down Tate and Connor the left guard I mean 14 nothing in terms of penalties shocking stat so it's first and 15. If you're Texas, though, at least it happened pre-snap where you don't waste time. You're still at 40 seconds. Ewers to the air. Taking a shot. Single coverage downfield and thrown out of bounds. Going for Xavier Worthy, but again, it landed out of play. Corey Black in coverage. That play took seven seconds. 33 seconds left. And yet another overthrow for Quinn Ewers and targeting Xavier Worthy, which has got to be closing on 20 times here throughout the day. Good coverage down the field by Corey Black. And even with the speed of Worthy, couldn't catch up to that pass. 17 targets, four catches for Worthy. That's it for their best receiver. On second and long, Ewers from the pocket. Got a receiver, but it's incomplete. Whittington couldn't hang on. Jabbar Muhammad was there defensively. Now it's third and 15 with 27 seconds left and no timeouts for Texas. Too tall, couldn't bring it in. And if he would have caught that ball and gotten tackled, that clock would have run. They've got to be able to complete something either for a first down or getting out of bounds. No timeouts left, and that clock is rolling. And not get tackled in bounds here, short of a first down if you're Texas. And all this kind of takes Bijan Robinson out of the game, really. Here's a throw, back shoulder caught inside the four. What a strike to Sanders from Ewers. The clock will st stop to reset the chains with 22 seconds left. Texas has got to get up there, either spike it or run a play, but they got to go fast. Now the clock starts again. Ewers back to throw. Over the middle again, and it's incomplete. And it's picked off in the redirection. Daniels with the interception off the hands of Sanders. Into the awaiting arms for Daniels to seal the deal for Oklahoma.
looked like Mason Cobb got his hand up in the throwing lane. Maybe that mess with the vision of Sanders balls up, and it's a big-time pick for Kendall Daniels. And what an impressive win for Mike Gundy and this Oklahoma State Cowboy team. Showed some real toughness, some real grit in this win. It was the defense of Oklahoma State that stepped up, holding Texas to three points since the end of the second quarter. Final score, 41-34. Oklahoma State wins for Dusty Dvorak, Tom Luganville.